Defense made a motion for a mistrial. Prosecutor was up to some fuckery. Potentially damaging evidence, no basis for it. The judge specifically said, do not ask that question. Do not use that as evidence. She walked right down the path and asked the question. It may be over on Tuesday morning. Batman Bruce Wayne bitch snitch. Gerald Brooks, your constitution does not apply to me because I'm a sovereign citizen, a traveler on the land. I'm the Moorish Empire or whatever bitch snitch. Because there's so fucking absurd. If you want to be a sovereign citizen, just do yourself a favor first. Go to YouTube here and binge it. Every sort of sovereign citizen that's ever been before. Find me one that one. Some clever dick on the internet didn't find the great loophole in all of the world's law. Bitch snitch. God dang, you're right. God dang, you're right. Traveler on the land. Empire Traveler on the land Bitch snitch Moorish Empire God dang, you're right Traveler on the land Bitch snitch Can you hear us? Can you uh, over? Me, we are sinking. We are sinking. Hello. This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, everybody. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're doing it with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm just glad you're doing it here with me, Legal Vices on a little old Legal Vices channel. Uh, it's Maritime Monday, of course, so that's what we're going to be talking about today, but maybe in a little different way than uh, th than you would expect it. But I, I hope the uh, of the movie the movie poster and the thumbnail kind of set the mood here. We we have Yoda who's in the living room doing his five minute freakout session. I'm sure he'll return to normalcy here in just a in just a bit. Um. <laughs> Of course, they had to do that as soon as I as soon as I flip on the microphone. Um, all right, let's just let's get the uh, eight hundred pound cold sore out of the way. I had a very very long week last week. I was extraordinarily tired, and I just kind of died over the weekend. So I got myself a nice little a nice little cold sore right in the middle of my lip to uh, to evidence the fact that I worked a hell of a lot last week, and I had a, a very long weekend. So <laughs> so there. Let's just uh, let's get the weird thing out of the way there. Uh, we'll need to we'll need to get like a little bit of cover up makeup for it there. I used to have like a little bit of cover up makeup to put on there, but anyway, we'll 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 <laughs> Mexican Vader, good old face herpes, yeah, got the herp. Uh, but that's a that's where we are today. We'll just we'll just see. This is like one of the situations where it's better to go. Yeah, oh no, it's just a bunch of ketchup or it's just, you know some hot sauce that I left on there for later. Uh, that's that's more socially it's more socially acceptable to have leftover food on your face. Um, but anyway, it it today is a, actually a very 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 special day as far as the Titanic goes. And I know if you've been watching my my Maritime Mondays for any length of time. You'll know that uh, I've I've said repeatedly that I will never ever talk about the Titanic because there are people out there in the universe who are way more knowledgeable than me and have covered this in way more detail than I ever could or ever possibly would even imagine doing. So it's it's things like this are better left to those that have gone there before and have done it in a 
in a much better way than you could possibly even conceive of doing. And plus, it's been done to death. But I thought I would take a little bit of an exception to that today, just for just because of a basically a, a, a very special and and serendipitous reason, frankly. Uh, that that reason is that uh, today, like today, happens to be the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. It hit the iceberg on the uh, late on the night of the 14th of, uh, of, of April. And then it eventually sank early, early in the wee hours of, of April 15th. So today is actually the, the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. And not only that, but also serendipitously, it happened today, today. It happened Monday, April 15th. It happened on the same day of the week, 112 years ago. So I thought that was sort of the universe perhaps sending me a sign that it's on the same day of the week, the same day of the month, it falls on Maritime Monday. So I don't know. I don't know if you believe in fate, you believe in magic, you believe in destiny or, or whatever, but you know, you have a show called Maritime Monday, and that coincides with not only the day that the Titanic went down, but also the day of the week that the Titanic went down. I thought, all right, that's it. It's uh, we're, we're meant to talk about this today. And uh, that's uh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so, it, But we're not going to do it in the traditional way. You know, ordinarily, ordinarily, we uh, we talk about the accident itself, we break it down. We look at legalities of it. We look at how the accident could have happened. What what were the contributing factors? We're not going to do very much of that, if at all, today. I thought we'd look at just some of the tangential facts, some of the some of the interesting facts around surrounding it. Uh, some, you know, in, in just just kind of working around the edges because so many people have gone down in the middle of um, phrasing. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's what we're going to do today. I don't know how long we'll go. It's there, There's not a whole lot that, that's uh, locked and loaded and lined up and ready to go. I just wanted to I just wanted to do something to commemorate the Titanic for the reasons that we've just talked about. So if you're looking for a hardcore, in-depth analysis of the accident or recreation, don't go looking here. I'll, I'll tell you where you want to go. You want to go to uh, Part Time Explorer. I'm going to put a chan. I'm going to put a link here in chat that you should all copy and paste. Uh, he does this every year. I believe he's done this for 11 years. I asked for permission to show his to show his video on on uh, on stream for a bit, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't get an email back in time. Of course, you know, it's it's early. I doubt he saw it, but if he does, if he ever does see the email and respond to it. Uh, I'll show you this because he they he got a panel. They do this every year. He gets a panel of Titanic historians, like world-renowned historians, on the channel. And not only do they do a a discussion of what happened on board the Titanic during the accident. Um, I'm just going to bring this up for a real quick second. As I said, I haven't got permission to show it. Uh, so, yeah, you know, this is. This is this is it. What he does is they do a a model rendering of the of the journey and they cover it in real time, which is absolutely cool and fascinating. So they'll 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 analyze what was going on on the ship at what time, and uh, been fired with warning shots as the boat was threatening to be mobbed by uh, a group of passengers and crew. So, and it just like, it's minute by minute from what they've been able to piece together. And of course that you, they've got the, uh, the iceberg, the, le the legendary iceberg that's coming up here. Have they hit it already? I believe so. I can't, I can't remember. I just, oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, they, they, they've got everything from, what was leading up, who was on board, what they were eating and doing all this last time up into the, the proverbial the ice here. Uh, he was so close to, wow. Why is that in 144? The the ship. Yeah. So it's, this is a fascinating, fascinating review. Like I said, he's got this panel of experts and they break this down minute by minute 
for like an hour before until three or four hours after the uh, the collision with the iceberg. So I cannot recommend the uh, the Part Time Explorers channel enough. It's really really fascinating. Um, so I, there's no way on earth I can compete with people like that. So we'll let them do their stuff and we'll do, we'll do my stuff, which includes reading the first super chat from Ozzy over law. Thank you, brother. People may be more knowledgeable. Just going to, just going to, let's try that again. People may be more knowledgeable. Just don't go down with the ship. Throw a coin to your law racks, people. Cold sore cream costs money. See, that's the thing. Cause I I'm prone to getting cold sores. Um, not, not that we need to know about my face herpes history, but I always have something here with me. And if you get it on there in the first, uh, that first time it just starts to tingle and you go, Oh God, there's a cold sore coming. Then it'll go away in a day or two. And I can't find mine for the life of me. It was yesterday, all the drug stores uh, or chemist shops, as some of you call them, were all closed yesterday because it was Sunday. And so, yeah, too late. So we've got to ride this one out, babies. But thank you so much, Ozzy Overlord, for breaking the seal on the uh, Super Chats for today. We've got Strawberry Locked and Loaded. We, as always, we unlock the emotional support potato pig dog English bulldog cam at the $100 mark. We've got special, special booze lined up for the reward slash punishment for the $200 achievement. And we still haven't figured out what a $300 achievement looks like because we haven't got there for ages and ages. Um, but in the meantime, I will be consuming a, uh, a, a rum and Coke or as, as, as you, you, you hoity toity highfalutin people call it the Cuba Libre. Uh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm having here. All right. With all of that out of the way, I just want to say again that I'm happy all of you are here. I don't know how many people are here. Let me see how many people are here. 350 of you here. That's actually pretty surprising. Thank you, 350 people that are here. And that means we've got 141 likes. Get down there and smash that like button, people. We Now is the time. We're going to be getting into this thing in about 30 seconds. So use this time wisely. Get down there. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And if you have, double check to make sure you are still subscribed because we are getting ever, ever closer, inch by inch closer to 76,000 subscribers. Uh, we're, we're on the slow march forward, and that's the great way to be. Right now, we have... 75,397 subscribers. We are three subscribers away from 75,400 and just 603 away from 76,000. So anyway, get down here, smash that like button, smash the subscribe button and take our like and subscribe poll. Today is a little bit of, little bit of movie debate. Obviously the Titanic movie. Today's like and subscribe poll is what should have happened at the end of Titanic. Rose did the right thing. Jack should have claimed the door and thrown her ass off. There was room for both. And they both should have drowned. <laughs> Vote on our Titanic movie poll after you hit that like and subscribe button. So thank you very much for doing that. Let's get into the tangential uh, Titanic stuff. I don't, even, I don't even have a good title for it. We'll just call it tangential Titanic stuff. Hmm. I'm sure they had rum and coke aboard the Titanic. If not, they should have. <clears throat> All right, people, where are we going to start? We are going to start with something that has nothing. <laughs> We're going to start our Titanic stream with something that has absolutely nothing to do with the Titanic. But it does involve an ocean liner. And it does involve death. And uh, that, is, that is an incident that happened recently. Aboard the Liberty of the Seas. Let's bring up the Liberty of the Seas here for y'all. Oh, in the meantime, hang on there. Half Sour. Half Sour says it was, uh, my son's birthday was the 13th and he's obsessed with the Titanic. He says he was on it when it sank. Ooh, scary. Because <laughs> kids are effed up. He's eight. He may have been aboard the Titanic in a previous life. Listen to him and see if he knows some details that uh, nobody else knows. We'll see. All right. This is the Liberty of the Seas. So what does this have to do with it? Uh, the... Let me remove the star here. Oh, been there, done that is also dropped in $5 for the herpes fund. <laughs> thank you. 
Thank you so much. Been there, done that. Lynn, did you dab it with whiskey? Um, well, we'll I'm sure we'll get there sooner or later this evening. I'm sure we'll get there. We'll, we'll get to dabbing it with with whiskey, whiskey, with lithy whiskey. We'll get we'll get to dabbing it with whiskey here in a bit, I'm sure. Thank you so much, Lynn. And Sherry Reed. What's up, Sherry Reed? I have the same issues. I feel your pain. Fast healing wishes for you. Thanks. But see, do you have this problem? I always get them in twos. Always in pairs. Like right about the time this one starts to fade, I'll get another one somewhere else on my lip. And then I have to go through the cycle again. They always, always come in twos. And I hate that. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm geared up and I'm ready for the next one. Daily Quick Bites says drowning wasn't the problem independently. Hypothermia was. Well, the, there are people in there, and I think they actually used the line in the movie, uh, but there were people that were jumping into the water were saying it was like being stabbed with a thousand knives. I mean, they're they're in the, the they're in the North Atlantic in in, in April. It's uh, it's cold. There's icebergs. That's how that's how cold the water is. There's icebergs in it. Much like there's little icebergs in my rum and coke. Um, wow! By the way, we're we're moving right along here. We are uh, we're seventy five away from dog cam. Woo! -hoo. So yeah, um, yeah. Evil and seven hundred thirty one Japanese taught us most of what we know now. Mm -hmm. We're just not gonna we're just not gonna go to that part of the. <clears throat> we're just not gonna go there. Uh, so why don't I just take it off the screen instead of let us sit there? All right, Liberty of the Seas. Let's 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 talk about this. What happened on Liberty of the Seas? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> we can stop talking about my cold sores now. I refuse to say the H word. The dad of Le'Veon Parker, the twenty-year-old Florida outdoorsman who drunkenly leaped to his death in front of his family. On a Royal Caribbean cruise last week, I don't. I, I think I saw the video to this where the kids like, woo! He like runs and jumps. Up. I'm not sure that it was that or if it was some other idiot jumping off, but I believe it was. It was that story. I believe it was this story, and I tried to find the video and I couldn't find it, so I may have hallucinated it. I'm not sure. But anywho, uh, this 20 year old kid in front of his family, he drunkenly leapt to his death. And now the family is questioning how his son was able to get so drunk despite being underage. Dad, mom, I, 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 I feel for you that you've lost a son in a moment of stupidity. But uh, can you guys look me right in the eye and say, you never got really drunk before you were 21, especially when around the time you were 20. All right, here's where this goes. In an interview with his hometown newspaper, The Daily Sun, Franzel Parker insisted that his son wasn't suicidal and that they weren't arguing before this fatal before his fatal plunge. Well, of course, that is a statement that contradicts what others on board told the New York Post they witnessed. It's always witnesses. It would have got away with it too if it hadn't been for you pesky witnesses. Instead, Franzel told the reporter his son's spontaneous jump was done out of drunken ignorance, something he suggested should have been avoidable. Well, yeah, that's why they have things like railings around the ship and stuff, but trust me, as someone who's dealt with a large number of, gee, somebody mysteriously disappeared while on board a ship, uh, you know, it's just, 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 they happen to have lots of gambling debts and things. Uh, yeah, if you want off, you can find a way off. That's a... Uh, that's just, you, you can't outsmart human ingenuity. We don't drink, he told the son. I'd like to know how my son was served so much alcohol. Probably looked over over 20, 21 or over and asked for it. That would be my guess. Or they just happen to be in the ship's buffet where it's normally usually just sitting out there in the buffet table, with glasses of champagne and beer and what have you. Uh, the sun is here. Despite being over international waters at the time of the fatal plunge, roughly midway between Grand... Inagua Island and Cuba. I almost said Grand Iguana. I was like, that'd be the coolest island to go to, the Grand Iguana Island. And Cuba. Hey, Cuba Libre. <laughs> now, cruises that depart and return from the U.S. ports are barred from serving alcohol to anyone under 21. True fact. Other countries on Earth assume that you are a responsible adult and uh, usually allow people 18 and over to drink. 
But if you come from and go to U.S. ports, 21, baby. Royal Caribbean has released a statement on the incident, but has not addressed witness statements that claimed Le'Veon was drunk. Parker added that he's holding out hope his son, an outdoorsman who won a saltwater fishing tournament just last month, is still alive somewhere in the Caribbean. I know you need closure, Dad, but come on. Yeah. Uh, it's It's been almost two weeks. Well, a week and a half. Now he's just floating around in the water for 10 days. He'd be dead just from thirst, if nothing else. Um, as soon as I... Oh, I, I feel, I feel for dad. I feel for the want of miracles and the power. I firmly believe in the power of prayer and things. But as soon as he went off the side, I prayed over him, he said, adding that his son was a skilled diver. I was confident the prayers I said over my son were heard. I stand on the word of God. I believe he is alive. I feel for you, but you know. I'm a bit of a realist, too. Uh, I believe the chance God had to save him was before he drunkenly jumped over the side of the ship's rail. <laughs> that was the, that was the time that when when God was able to prevent it. Once uh, once you want to do stuff, I think there comes a point when God goes, eh, all right, it's out of my hands. Cause and effect, F-A-F-O. But anywho, the tragedy unfolded around 4 a.m. On April 4th, on the 11th deck of the Massive Liberty of the Sea Cruise Liner. The 11th deck, so essentially you know, the, the 11th floor. Um, there's a very good chance he was dead shortly after he hit the water. So uh, jump, jump 11 stories plus out of, out of a building and uh, see what happens. Water is incredibly unforgiving at height. Witnesses told the Post last week that Le'Veon was hanging out in a hot tub with his brother when he was approached by his dad, who appeared angry that he had been drinking. Mm hmm Well, after what he perceived as being an argument, the witness, Brian Sims, told the Post that he heard Le'Veon tell his dad, I'll fix this right now! Moments later, he jumped into the dark ocean below, an incident Sims described as being an impulsive leap. Sims added that the ship was moving pretty fast and the Francel screamed for staff to alert the captain, which brought the ship to a complete stop within 20 minutes. See, this is what I've been saying, particularly in relation recently to the uh, Baltimore Bridge incident. You're like, ah, they, they dropped the anchor. How come they just didn't put the brakes on? As I've said then, and I'll say now, and I've said in relation to other cases, when you have a ship that is steaming full ahead, it takes a very long time for that ship to stop. So he's saying here, it came to a complete stop in about 20 minutes. That's actually pretty quick for a ship that size. That's a pretty fast stop because their inertia is, is a bitch, man. Especially just, it's like hitting black ice and saying, well, I'm going to jam on the brakes. And then you just keep going and going and going until friction and inertia slowly, you know, inertia slowly dies and friction slowly ga gathers hold of you, I guess. But yeah, uh, so the kid is 20 minutes back there. And remember I said it can also take, uh, you know, 30 up to like 30 minutes for a ship to make a complete turn. So you figure at least another, you know, 20 minutes or so to bring the ship all the way around and start back 20 minutes the next direction. Plus you also have to time it so you're slow down in that area. So it's, an, it's the kid's going to be in the water for at least an hour before the ship gets back is what I'm trying to say. <sighs> Unfortunately, you know, the the thinking head kind of thinks the wrong shit sometimes. The vessel launched rescue boats, but to no avail, Le'Veon was nowhere to be found. Francel told the son he flung six life rings off the ship, hoping he would hoping one would reach his son, who had who he said accompanied him on board along with his younger brother to take a break from his work on a commercial fishing boat. Yeah, and see if, if he's worked on a commercial fishing boat. He knows these things. He knows these things. Social media posts showed Le'Veon graduate from Northport High School in Southwest Florida between Sarasota and Fort Myers in 2022. He played football there and regularly posted about fishing and hunting. In, in its loan statement on the incident, Royal Caribbean said last week it was providing support and assistance to Le'Veon's family. 
The ship's crew immediately launched a search and rescue, rescue effort along with the U.S. Coast Guard, it said, adding that for the privacy of the guests and their family, we have no additional details to share. So that's the one story that, uh, that I wanted to bring up in relation to this, by the way. Um, it's not a, it's just, like I said, it has nothing to do with the Titanic. It's just a new timely incident that happened to, happened to be involved uh, in something going on around. Yeah, it's, it's happened to involve some deaths, basically is what I'm saying. And I'm sure they, uh, they'll, they'll sue the, they'll sue the shipbuilder. They'll sue the, uh, they'll sue the cruise lines. They'll sue everybody because dumb shit happened. Should they have let, the, if the kid was 20, should they have let him get drunk? No, but you know, uh, somebody's going to pay up and it's going to make the insurance companies rich. Wait, it's going to cost the insurance companies money and it's going to make them raise their premium. So thanks. But yeah, it, 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 this just, it's just a quick story to show you that dumb things can happen that fast that you regret later, as long as you have left alive to actually regret. Okay, that was our that was our first our first non Titanic related story. We're we're getting closer to Titanic. We've gone from a cruise ship involving death. Now we're going to get into a little more of it here. But first, let's see what's up over in Super Chat Land. We are looking. Looks like we're about seventy away now. Do 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 do. Yeah, we're about sixty eight away to be correct. To be correct. Oh, Miss Mister K. I almost did it again, Mister K. Mr. K, recurring herpes sounds rough. Get well soon. It's it's only when I like if I get really really tired, or if I get a if I get a cold. I guess that's why they're called cold sores. Huh? If I get some sort of cold, or if I get really tired, those are the only times I get them. And I I was really really tired after last week and over the weekend. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Nick Stara. What's up, brother? With a sexy fitty, Swedish monies. They became peepsicles. You know, it's it's been 112 years, but it's almost too soon, Nick. It's almost still too soon. Uh, and all right, again, this is something I should just say candidly. Candidly, there's a lot of channels out there that take a very somber approach to the the Titanic incident. You know, it's, it's a somber memory where we we uh, you know show our respects and 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 uh, you know we act real somber and we talk about the horrible loss of life. Well, you know what we do? We we tend to you know, not desecrate the memory of things, but we try to keep it light as possible. But that, yeah, not a lot you can really do <laughs> to keep things light about this, which is why we're skirting around the edges, just skirting around the edges. Buddha berries with the five Aussie bucks, condolences on your herpes. Well, thanks, I guess. Stop, stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, it's almost too soon. You know, Kitty says it's never too soon. For the time, the Titanic was a cruise ship of sorts. It, well, it, it was. I mean, <laughs> it was a very, very nice cruise ship. Cannibal rats, Joe? Oh, there's no cannibal rats on this one that we're aware of. Well, that was depressing. What's next? Well, we're, we're working up to the death of 1,500 people. I mean, you know. Do sharks get drunk if they, if they eat drunk people? Hmm. I would assume that uh, it's theoretically possible because as I've talked about one of my, I've talked about it several times recently here, the spider Robinson wrote these great books, Callahan, but uh, you know, this, this bar called Callahan's and it's a little series of books that are great. And, and it's where all these multidimensional creatures come. They meet at this bar that uh, it's called Callahan's and they, they have adventures together. There is one, there's one character in there. that's an alcoholic vampire. So people go in there, they drink way too much. They, uh, you know, they, they 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 almost drink themselves into alcoholic comas, and then they pay him to uh, you know, drain their blood system of alcohol. So he gets drunk. So it's great. He gets paid to get drunk, and then they get they pay to drink a lot, and then get sober and not have a hangover the next morning. So it's, <laughs> it's a pretty funny character. All right, that's enough of that's enough of uh, Spider Robinson and Callahan's bar. Do they also sell auto parts? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, MG Law. Titanic wasn't a nice cruise ship for the steerage passengers. Still, even for the steerage passengers, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. There was a there was a little, I mean, steerage is never great, but as far as steerage goes, 
the Titanic steerage was pretty darn good. Y'all can read that. I'm not going to read that. <laughs> Aiden, go to your room. <laughs> okay. The next story. Let's uh, let's talk about the food. Let's talk about the food on the Titanic. Again, we were because we were. That was actually a very good segue, saying that, you know the steerage class, the third class was steerage class. The third class. They, this is a menu. This is a menu from April 14th, 1912 on the RMS Titanic. So what did the third class people eat? Uh, when Jeff sees my super chat, lol. All right, we'll get to it. <sighs> Could be worse, Jeff. We had a POW when I was in Iraq that had herpes where his colostomy bag was. Well, this, this isn't them kind. <laughs> this isn't them kind of bugs. Vince Clortho! What's, uh, thank you, by the way, for that. Uh, Vince Clortho, thank you very much, brother. Was it really the Titanic and not the Olympic? Dun, dun, dun. Now, see, that's something that triggers the historians and makes them, makes them angry and grumpy. Me, I like a good conspiracy. But yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the conspiracy question, isn't it? But more important, uh, back to what did what did they eat? What did they eat in third class? This is the White Star Line again. You know they want they want people to come on their ship. It's not like here, come and ride our prison barge. They actually want you to have a good time, even even in third class. The RMS Titanic third class breakfast: oatmeal porridge. Oatmeal porridge, pretty good. Yeah. Milk, smoked herrings, jacket potatoes, ham and eggs, fresh bread and butter, marmalade, swish, Swedish bread. Yay, Nick, they had some Swedish bread. Uh, tea and coffee. That's a pretty damn good breakfast for third class, isn't it? And dinner, rice soup, fresh bread, cabin biscuits, roast beef, brown gravy, sweet corn, boiled potatoes, plum pudding, sweet sauce, and fruit. Alan, Alan Walsh, shame on you. Uh, tea, cold meat, cheese, pickles, fresh bread and butter, stewed figs, and rice tea. That sounds like a damn good meal for anybody today. This was third class on the Titanic. And then supper. Gruel. Okay, that doesn't sound great. They could, they could have called it something else other than gruel, you know, goulash or something like that. Here's your, here's your gruel for supper. Gruel, cabin biscuits, and cheese. <laughs> Any complaint respecting the food supplied, want of attention or incivility, should be at once reported to the purser or chief steward. For purposes of identification, each steward wears a numbered badge on his arm. So this this is uh, this this was the the April fourteenth menu for third class. Imagine what they were eating in first class if this was. If this was just the, the lowly third class. All right, we're, we're bringing it in. We're bringing it in towards the Titanic. We've got the menu going. Uh, hi, gang. Hi, Lindsay. No 11s for, for shame, legal vices. Hey, I didn't, I didn't make the menu. They, they, there's no second breakfast, no 11s, none like that there. Uh, what's the difference between dinner and supper? Dinner was sort of more light, late lunchy then, I guess. Is there an aquatic version of marijuana? Oh, I don't know. They got catnip. I'm assuming there's like some sort of shark nip out there in the wild. I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me such difficult questions. Well, all right. We know that uh, the Titanic sank 112 years ago today. It went down and nobody knew where it was for the longest time. They didn't, nobody knew where it was until exactly where it was until 1985. How is it found? 
Well, there's a lot of a lot of documentaries on how it was found, but uh, we've referenced it, I believe, once, maybe twice on Maritime Monday. There was no mission to find the Titanic. There, there was there was no project that said, "Let's go find the uh, the Titanic." It was a cent- It wasn't really an accident. It was sort of a. It was sort of, uh, we've got some extra time. Let's look for it. But what did we have extra time from doing? This is the true story, uh, abbreviated in article form, of why and how the Titanic wreckage was found. The wreckage of the Titanic was found nearly 39 years ago during a secret U.S. Navy mission to recover nuclear submarines. It wasn't really to recover the nuclear submarines. As I understand it, it was to, it was to uh, find and investigate the, the uh, wreckage of the nuclear submarines to see if there's any indication that the loss of the two submarines were due to Soviet activities and to see if the uh, Soviets had taken any of the warheads or other weaponry or equipment from the submarines. Yes, the, uh, the, the thresher was one of those. And before we get into this article, let's address Joseph Nash's $2 super chat. Thank you very much. You have put us halfway to doggo cam. We are fitty away from emotional potato pig dog support cam. Titan Titanic swimming pools are still full to this day. Yeah. Yes, they are. Mm hmm. <sighs> Too soon. Uh, we th- who thrive. What is this? I like, I like these videos that just kind of. Scroll have nothing to do with articles. Anyway, uh, let's look at the article here. The Titanic sank 112 years ago in April 1912, but the wreckage was only found 39 years ago. Robert Ballard and Jean-Louis Michel found the wreckage 73 years after the ship sank. Decades later, Ballard revealed that the dive was actually a secret Cold War Navy mission. Almost immediately, I think we talked about it. I know we talked about it when we talked about the Thresher. Uh, And uh, the Thresher submarine was one of the submarines they were looking for. And I think we may have referenced it one other time. Almost immediately after the Titanic sank on April 15th, 1912, there were attempts to recover the wreckage and the bodies of those who had gone down with the ship. However, the limited diving technology of the time prevented this from becoming a reality for more than seven decades. On September 1, 1985, almost 39 years ago, the wreckage was found during a joint exploration by an American oceanographer, Robert Ballard, who was also a Navy officer and a French oceanographer, Jean-Louis Michel, as the New York Times reported at the time. But the dive initially had nothing to do with the Titanic at all. It was a secret mission to find the wrecks of two nuclear submarines, the USS Scorpion and the USS Thresher, which if you watched last week's uh, Maritime Monday with my with my dear friend, uh, retired Commander Josh Chisholm, uh, he, he talked briefly about the, uh, the Scorpion and the Thresher as being the only two nuclear submarines, or the, the only two submarines, period, I guess we've lost. Uh, well, nuclear submarines, let's keep it at that. So, yeah, he he talked about that briefly. However, this information was not made public until 2008, when Ballard revealed the true nature of the mission to National Geographic. The Navy is finally discussing it, Ballard told National Geographic in 2008. Ballard originally met with the U.S. Navy in 1982 to secure funding for a new type of submersible technology that would allow him to find the Titanic, The Navy agreed to fund the project, but only if it would be used to investigate the sunken submarines. The USS Thresher sank in April 1963, and the USS Scorpion followed five years later in May 1968. They remain the only nuclear submarines the Navy has ever lost, reported the United States Naval Institute. And it was just weird that they both happened to go down in relatively the same sea space. 
So the Navy agreed that, uh, and they, if, if I recall the plotting correctly, the Titanic is almost right between the wreck of the Thresher and the wreck of the Scorpion. If I remember correctly, I could be talking out of my backside, but that's, I remember seeing a map and that's how I remember what the map looked like. The Navy agreed that Ballard could search for the Titanic if there were any time left in the mission after finding the subs and after confirming whether the Soviet Union had played any part in sinking them. Uh, we have not covered the Scorpion. We have covered the Thresher. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to covering the Scorpion. Oh, Strawberry has brought a chew toy, so you, you now have the emotional support potato bulldog pig dog uh, chew toy sound. We saw no indication of some sort of external weapon that caused the ships to go down. Ronald Thunman, the, the, then the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Submarine Warfare, told National Geographic. There's a shot of the Titanic wreck in 1996. With 12 days left in the mission, Ballard found the Titanic using a hunch that the ship had split in two and left a trail of debris. That's what saved our butts, Ballard said to National Geographic. It turned out to be true. Ballard said the Navy was nervous that people would catch on to why they were actually scouring the ocean floor. The Navy never expected me to find the Titanic, and so when that happened, they got really nervous because of the publicity, Ballard said. People were so focused on the legend of the Titanic, they never connected the dots. Ah, it's extra loud because it is a uh, it's a plastic bottle. Sorry, I've got to go relieve the dog of the plastic bottle. I'm so sorry, Strawberry. I'm so sorry. Here, have a chew toy instead. Here you go. Chew toy. Chew toy. I, was like, I don't want the stupid chew toy, you idiot. If I wanted the chew toy, I would have taken the chew toy. I want the really loud, annoying pet bottle. <sighs> sorry about that. I'm back. <clears throat> so, 23 years later, Ballard disclosed the truth Ballard disclosed the truth about his mission. He also wrote about his experience finding the ship in his book The Discovery of the Titanic. It was one thing to have won, to have found the ship he wrote, it was another thing to be there. That was the spooky part. Correction, July 18th, 2023, an earlier version of the story misstated when the USS Scorpion disappeared. It was lost in May 1968, not May 1965. Read the original article on Business Insider. So that's how the Titanic was found, essentially by accident, just because uh, this guy wanted to develop a, develop a submersible. The Navy said they'd pay for it as long as you use it to look for the two nuclear submarines we've lost. And if you got some extra time, you can find the Titanic. And he just sort of accidentally found it on a hunch that there might be a debris trail that they can follow to the accident. And boom, there you go. All right, looks like another, oh, no, looks like another super, super chat had come in, but it was just me not, uh, not unstarring the swimming pool joke. Straubs will have her revenge. Yes, she will. She will have her revenge. All right. Do, 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 do. Never apologize for Strawberry. Just let her live her best life. We don't care about the noise. I do. I get distracted easily. Uh, but we, we are halfway to seeing Strawberry. Uh, Yoda's already gone and just effed off to, to sleep on the sofa. But Strawberry is here, as always. Titanic jokes never get old, just like Jack. Uh, I hope chat let him have it for strawberry. Well, there you go. All right, so we're, we we've we've found the Titanic accidentally or or uh, serendipitously, however you want to describe it. <laughs> exactly, Simon. See, you you're you're there's like bad trolls and there's good trolls and then there's chaotic neutral or chaotic evil trolls. Uh, I think Simon is a is a chaotic neutral troll because he's sort of trolling me and making fun of me. He's like, come on, Vice Squad, let's give the Larex some more money so he'll show us footage of his dogs. First of all, it's not footage, it's actual live camera. But whilst, whilst he's being trolly, he's also being incredibly accurate. <laughs> so he's, he's, a, he's a chaotic neutral troll. 
He, he gets his trolley digs in, but he's not wrong. And he's not malicious about it. He's not, you know, he's not like, yeah, throw some money to the fat fuck. You know, which now he's probably, but he's, he's, he's subtle. He's, he's a good chaotic neutral troll. Oh, I like that. Okay. <laughs> With that out of the way. <clears throat> Um, now what was I going to talk about? <laughs> He's trolled my ADHD out of, out of my brain here. Uh, oh yeah. All right. That's what I was going to do. <sighs> Imagine the Titanic with a lisp. It's unthinkable. Kith my ass off the overload. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hayden. Right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what's next? Ah, yes. Now it's time. Like everybody knows. Everybody knows. Sorry. 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 I'm not going to get off on Leonard Cohen there. <laughs> that's how, that's how, if you don't have ADHD or no, it's someone who does. That's how your brain works. You're in the middle of doing something important, and then you uh, something triggers you to think something else, and you just start going off on that rail, which I'm not doing. I'm sticking to the sticking to the story here. We all know if if you know much about the Titanic at all that uh, it set sail from Southampton, and it was on its way to New York from Southampton, England. But how many of you knew, uh, by show of hands? <laughs> How many of you knew that it actually stopped at two other places to take on passengers after it left Southampton? Show of internet hand, did anybody know that? Uh, it's, it's weirdly not talked about a lot. Oh, one co cowpoke knew. All right. Michelle M knew that. A couple of people seem to have known that. Uh, Laura Owens, Belfast. Well, okay, we should talk about that, Laura Owens. Uh, before we get on the main voyage, it was the ship was built in Belfast. So that, I mean, that's where, I guess that's the original leaving point. It, uh, it was built in Belfast, Ireland. If uh, you go back and you watch my watch stream, <laughs> watch the, excuse me, watch the watch stream. We had, uh, we had the founder of Nomadic Watches, uh, on the channel, and he talked uh, talked a little bit about his watches, and a little bit about the Titanic, and a little bit about the shipyard there in Belfast. And uh, they their watches, they're 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 the lower end luxury watches. They're great watches. I, I own two of them. One of the watches is a tribute to the uh, Shackleton expedition that we discussed a couple of times. Uh, the so we, I have the the Shackleton Memorial watch, and I also just have a regular green diving watch. But uh, there's a lot of watch history in there because their watch where they make the watches is right down the street from where they built the Titanic in the big shipyards. And like, for example, the, the, the watch has yellow hands, which are a, an homage to the giant yellow cranes that uh, the shipyard had that built the Titanic. And the nomadic is actually the uh, it's like the lighter ship. That's where they used to take people from shore to the Titanic, take provisions from the shore to the Titanic. Uh, the ship was called nomadic and it sits there, in Belfast right now, and uh, that's why they, they named their company Nomadic after that ship. Uh, so yeah, if, if anybody were interested in, in watches, particularly getting into into uh, you, you know, luxury watches, starting at low tiers, their their watches go for right around a thousand dollars, somewhere between nineteen and eleven hundred pounds. Um, it, it's a great entry point uh, to get a, to get a really good watch. Uh, but they also have a very very deep history. Uh, you know, very very deep ties to Ireland. They're they're Irish and proud of it, and it, they tie it into the into the Titanic. So the uh, Titanic didn't stop at Belfast. Uh, it was sort of where it was built and and began its life from. Ran R and R and O R and zero Rand zero Rando. We'll just call you Rando. Rando with the two dollars. Thank you so much. That is apparently Rando's first super on a live stream. Thank you very much for being the first super on a live stream. And Ozzy says, I remembered watching the Titanic and bawled my eyes out because the painting scene with Rose was too short. I know. I saw it with my ex-wife and had to pretend to not be interested in Kate Winslet whatsoever. 
Thank God for video. Uh, anyway. <laughs> and also, you may bawl your eyes out realizing that it was damn near 30 years ago that movie came out. 30 years ago that almost came out. Well, almost came out 30 years. So 90, 1997 is when the movie came out. All righty. So. A few, a few of you knew that it had stopped at a couple of other places. All we hear about is setting sail from Southampton and uh, not quite making it to New York. Well, it first the first stop was in Cherbourg, and then it stopped in a in a little Irish town, little Irish town, uh, where it took on the final one hundred and twenty three passengers. Uh, Queenstown, now now known as as Cove, spelled C O B H because Irish. Uh, <laughs> C C O B H is pronounced Cove. Uh, so there is there in Cove, Ireland, where it stopped to take on the last one hundred and twenty three passengers. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Queensland connection, the the Cove connection to the Titanic. Yeah, 30 years. The uh, Titanic movie came out 24, 27 years ago. <sighs> wow. Uh, right. Oh, let's see. Share the screen. Someone should have taught the Irish to spell. Uh, it's the alcohol. You know, just throw some random letters and eh, it's pronounced Siobhan. Oh, someone just mentioned Siobhan there. Yeah. S I O B H A N is Siobhan. Yeah. As anyone who watches Billions should know, uh, Shiv, her her actual character's name is Siobhan. All right. And so that's that's also why I am wearing my Irish flat cap from the uh, from the Aron sweater market in Ireland. It was to pay tribute to the to the folks uh, in Queenstown, now known as Cove, but also. As I said, I would get around to dabbing some whiskey on the cold sore. Now's the time when I will I will take a little bit of a little shot of whiskey for the pour some pour some out for the the Titanic. This is Redbreast 12 year single pot still Irish whiskey. One of the best Irish whiskeys you will ever ever taste. If you can get the the uh, cask strength, uh, do it. But this is this is made in Ireland about. 16, 17 miles down the road from Cove here, where the where the Titanic made its last fateful stop. It's also where they make Jameson as well. Um, but yeah, this is Red Breast 12 from just down the road from 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 Cove here where the Titanic stopped. So cheers, a uh, couple of seconds of silence for the the victims of the Titanic. Oh, it's so good. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what do you got here. Oh, that was the that was Rand Super Chat. Got it. Oh yeah, we should give we should give the cold sore a name. Uh, just dab some whiskey on it. Woo! Yeah, it stings. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, let's talk about Queenstown. Again, as it, as it's now known as Cove, I mean, I've somehow upset my screen arrangement. So, in order to see that article, I have to go over here. All right, here we are. Gotcha. Titanic's maiden voyage, the Queenstown connection. And there is someone in in uh, it was in my Twitter feed that I I hope she's here watching this now. Uh, she's she's actually from Cove. So I hope she's here, and I, I, I hope she's watching, and I hope she can, she can fill us in if she uh, with some details if she's watching live now. All that has been over one hundred years since the RMS Titanic set sail, her story still endures, capturing hearts and minds throughout the world. As we follow the great ocean liner's fateful journey through the through the week ahead in the run up to April fourteenth, join us here at our commemorative evening in Titanic Belfast, a night to remember. That was the first time I became acquainted with the uh, Titanic, was in fourth grade, reading the book, A Night to Remember. 
Uh, it really impacted me. It, it was a fascinating book. So if, if any of you have have not read uh, the, the A Night to Remember or and are interested in in the Titanic, that's a great that's a great place to start. A Night to Remember on, on April 14th, as we look at the timeline of events leading up to and after the ship met her tragic end. On April 11th, 1912, at 11.30 a.m., RMS Titanic dropped anchor in Queenstown, Ireland, at uh, Roche's Point, outer anchorage today named Cove. The port was the luxury liner's final port of call on his maiden journey before setting sail on the longest lead leg of the voyage to New York, USA. Tenders PS Ireland and PS America were waiting to were waiting in the dock to transport 123 passengers out to board, 63 men and 60 women. For many of whom Queenstown was the gateway to a great new world. Several of the creme de la creme passengers had boarded at Cherbourg, therefore passengers boarding at Queenstown consisted of only 7 second class and 113 third class ticket holders. Whilst anchoring in Ireland, seven passengers disembarked, including Father Francis Brown, a distinguished photographer of the time who received a ticket as a present from his uncle. Brown took some of the last photographs of the Titanic and its crew before she sank, including photos of the luxurious facilities on board, such as the gymnasium. During his short time aboard the Titanic, Brown befriended an American millionaire who offered to pay his way to New York. However, much to his luck, Brown's superior responded to the telegraph requesting permission, claiming, get off that ship, provincial. <laughs> I guess that was lucky for him. Uh, do you believe... The conspiracy about J.P. Morgan knowing something was wrong and canceled his ticket. I don't know how I feel about that. I think he would have. I think he would have said something. I don't know. I'd like to think he would have said something, but I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, uh, I would. It wouldn't surprise me. You know, I mean, Morgan and uh, and Hearst and and all those you know and all the other the other uber rich people. You know, they're out for themselves, but who knows. So alongside the tenders, a number of smaller vessels carrying vendors set sail to meet Titanic approximately two miles offshore. They were selling local specialties such as lace and crafts to wealthy passengers on board, while 1,385 bags of mail were also delivered to the Royal Mail Steamer. Well, that's also another thing. We, we just looked at the, uh, this is how clever they were. Uh, we, we just looked at the menu for the third class people. Those menus also were uh, usable as postcards. So they were intended to uh, be used as postcards, but, you know, never got to send them. Uh, let's see, where where where'd we go here? I've, I've outspazzed myself. All right. Uh, 1,385 bags of mail were also delivered to the Royal Mail Steamer, RMS, bound for North America during the Queenstown stop. See, that's that's also something that a lot of people don't know. The Titanic, although it's a it's essentially a cruise ship, it was mainly a mail ship. That was that was his designation. RMS is Royal Mail Steamer. So that's a, although it was said, although it was a cruiser a cruise ship, it was designated primarily as a mail ship. Bound for North America during the Queensland Queensland Queenstown stop, as the great liner prepares to leave, one crewman, fireman John Coffee, a native of Queenstown, deserts the ship. You should always have coffee for dessert. Mm. Coffee deserts the ship. On board are now an estimated 1,316 passengers, representing about one half of the ship's total passenger capacity on what was classed as low season on the North Atlantic. At 1.30 p.m., an exchange of whistles indicated for tenders to return to the dock and Titanic raised anchor to the strains of Aaron's Lament, played on the bagpipes by steerage passenger Eugene Daly, and set off on her transatlantic crossing the transatlantic crossing as we follow the great ocean liner's fateful journey through the week oh we already read that part here <laughs> in the third of our series we looked at what was going on board of the world's most renowned transatlantic crossing and how they spent their time on the most luxurious ship of the era as the liner sailed through the relatively calm ocean on the 12th and 13th of april the weather was favorable and they were making good time on the journey now, talking about good time, there's there's also a uh, 
a, I don't know if you'd call it a conspiracy, but there's also rumors and things that they were trying to set some sort of speed record across the Atlantic. That has been thoroughly and soundly debunked. Uh, there, there's no, no record, no hint, no whisper of them actually trying to set some sort of speed record. <clears throat> Simon Franklin, you all, almost thou makest me want to make you a mod. <laughs> uh, all right. As the liner sailed through the relatively calm ocean on the 12th and 13th of April, the weather was favorable and they were making good time on the journey. Passengers were settling into their luxurious surroundings and the crew were going about their everyday business. I mean, what? Their everyday business of, of being a crewman, I guess. Uh, they passengers were, were where'd we go here? Those aboard include some of the creme de la creme of early 20th century business culture, high society, and sports on both sides of the Atlantic, as well as the chairman of White Star Line, J. Bruce Ismay, and shipbuilder Thomas Andrews. Ismay's come under a lot of fire, too, all of course, historically and according to documents, unwarranted, but. That's for, that's for more knowledgeable and more in-depth people than me to talk about. The richest man on the Titanic was the owner of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, John Jacob Astor. Of course, Waldorf, the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, famous for the birthplace of the Waldorf salad. Among other things, is that's where the Waldorf salad came from, the uh, Waldorf Astoria Hotel. So John Jacob Astor was there and his 19-year-old wife. According to the New York Times, Astor put up and owned more hotels and skyscrapers than any other New Yorker and was estimated to be worth as much as $200 million. That's a lot of bucks back in the, the, in the early 1900s. Another well-known American couple on board was the owner of Macy's Department Store, New York, Mr. Isidore Strauss and his wife Ida, who are traveling back from their winter from winter in Europe on the Titanic. Once it was clear the ship was sinking, Ida refused to leave Isidore and would not get onto a lifeboat without him. A memorial plaque for them can be seen today at the 34th Street Memorial entrance of Macy's Herald Square. Oh, that's a that's a love story if there ever was one. Like the movie, there was also a lady called Margaret Molly Brown on board the ship. Not only did she survive the Titanic sinking, but helped others board lifeboats, eventually becoming known as the unsinkable Molly Brown. And if you get a chance to see that movie, if you get a chance to see the unsinkable Molly Brown, that's a hell of a good movie. Um, I, I'm trying to, I, can't, I have to see what, who the hell was the main actress in that. It was so good. Unsinkable Molly Brown. Not we want the movie. It was 1964. Uh, who was Molly Brown? Oh, he's Debbie Reynolds. That's right. I knew it was like somebody, <laughs> Ed Bagley, uh, the father of Ed Bagley, Ed Bagley Jr., who was the kid from uh, Christmas Story. Uh, who, else, who else was in it? Uh, I guess those are pretty much the, the main people that were there. So, yeah, it was uh, Debbie Reynolds played Molly Brown. Great, great movie. I just couldn't think. All right. Sorry. Let me get back to my, let me get back to the screen. I need to get back to got sidetracked by the unsinkable Molly Brown. <laughs> MG law. You're funny. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so the unsinkable Molly Brown helped people board the lifeboats. As well as notable passengers, the head chef of Titanic's prestigious a la carte restaurant was celebrated Italian Luigi Gatti, who traveled to Britain at a young age to join the restaurant business. Prior to working on board Titanic, he ran the impressive Ritz restaurants in London, Gatti's Adelphi, and Gatti's Strand, as well as working on Titanic's sister ship, Olympic. Dun, dun, dun. The restaurant located on Titanic's B deck, that's the, the restaurant there, I assume was exquisitely decorated and furnished in the French Louis XVI or Louis C's style with seating for over 150 customers. 
Compared with Titanic's first-class dining saloon, the restaurant was small, but incorporated a reception room for pre-dinner drinks and an adjoining Café Parisien. Meals cost $3 for breakfast, 3 to 6 for lunch, and 5 and above for dinner. In today's money, 7, 20, 7 pounds 20, 8 pounds 40, and 12 pounds. The menu from the last lunch on board the Titanic. Uh, it can be seen as part of the Titanic experience. If you if you go to Cove, they have a Titanic experience, which uh, is essentially the Titanic Museum. That's a, that's a bucket list item for when I get over to, to uh, Scotland and Ireland, uh, hopefully next year. I just kind of want to visit all the distilleries and the uh, nomadic watch factory and the Titanic experience. The daily menu for third-class passengers was provided on a single card that also doubled as a postcard, as I just said, with a list of the company's routes and space for a short message on the reverse. This was a clever marketing ploy as a large proportion of those traveling third-class to the U.S. were emigrating, and this ensured that family and friends received not only a note from their loved ones, but an advertisement as well. Other luxury facilities on board included a gym, a pool, Turkish baths, a camp. Joey, have you ever been in a Turkish bath? Joey, have you ever seen a grown man naked? <clears throat> uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. <sighs> Airplane will never not be funny. Wait, where'd we go? Ah, a kennel for first class dogs. Sorry, bitches, you don't get to go first class. Your emotional support potato pig. Oh, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not mad at you. Strawberry's like, what'd I do? You're, I'm not mad at you, piggy. I'm not mad at you. I was just making a joke. I was just making a joke. Oh, there you go. Go lay back down. All right. Sorry. I had to pay attention to the dog. I was like pointing at the dog saying, you bitches aren't first class. And <laughs> Strawberry just gives me this look. Sorry. Sorry, dog. <laughs> I apologize. Go back to sleep. I'm sorry, baby. All right. <laughs> There's a kennel for first class dogs. My dogs wouldn't cut it. And a squash court. The first class cabin on Titanic were, were the same standard as hotel cabins, while second class was as good as first class on other ships. Oh, this is a replica of the first class cabin at Titanic Belfast. A Titanic, as Titanic sailed in the early hours of September, of Sunday, 14th of April, all on board was running smoothly with the ship working up to a high speed of 22 knots as her maiden voyage continued. Uh, well, I guess I guess that's uh, that's all we get to see here. <laughs> Throughout the anniversary of a tragic updates to our Facebook, Twitter, annual night to remember. Eh, well, I guess that's all the story we get. They're not going to give us any more of the stories. <laughs> but there are also there all are are also uh, events that that have taken place in Cove yesterday, Sunday, that. Uh, I just wanted to talk about here real quickly and briefly. Titanic will be remembered in coves today, Sunday, yesterday. Here's the uh, Titanic Trail guided tours. Cove and Cork Harbor are steeped in a great diversity of military, maritime, and immigrant history. This area will be witnessed. The area has witnessed the great tide of mass emigration from famine and war. This harbor has hosted the greatest liners ever built, among them the RMS Titanic, the RMS Lusitania, and the SS America. Commemorative events to mark the 112th anniversary. Cove will commemorate the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic today. A public ceremony of remembrance will take place in the harbor town. Famously known as the final port of call for the ill-fated ship on her maiden voyage to New York in 1912. Details of the Titanic commemoration are available on visitcove.com, C-O-B-H. Organized by Cove Tourism, the annual, annual commemorative event will commence at 3 p.m. at the Titanic Memorial in Pierce Square, featuring solemn tributes including music, prayers, and the laying of reeds. Dignitaries, Cove locals, maritime enthusiasts, and general public are cordially invited to attend to pay their respects. A color party from the Cove Irish branch, O-N-E, will march on the Titanic Memorial, will march to the Titanic Memorial, not march on it, march to the Titanic Memorial, where ceremonies will include prayers, wreath laying, and musical honors by the Commodore Male Voice Choir. 
Following the memorial service, attendees will gather at the promenade to hear the names of the 79 passengers who boarded the Titanic in Cove on April 11, 1912, only to tragically perish in the icy waters of the North Atlantic four days later. So that's, that's very, very similar to uh, what they do at the uh, Maritime Cathedral there in, uh, in Whitefish Bay, I believe it is, with the Edmund Fitzgerald. Uh, where they, on the anniversary, they always ring the bell the 29 times, as it says in the song, and they read out the names of uh, all of the, the crew on the Edmund Fitzgerald. So they essentially do the same thing here in Cove for the 79 people that died, who had boarded the Titanic in Cove. A wreath will then be cast into the sea in remembrance for all those lost in the maritime disaster, followed by the Cove Confer Confraternity Band's poignant rendition of The Last Post and Reveille. For those wishing to learn more about Cove's Titanic connection, a visit to Cove Heritage Center at the Titanic Experience Cove or joining in a Titanic trail walking tour are a must, where the stories of those who set sail from Queenstown on the ship's ill-fated maiden voyage are brought to life. Hmm. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I, ho I hope she watches this in comments because... Uh, that's one of the places I want to go. I want to go to Cove. I want to. I want to do this. Uh, the walking tour and the museum and all the other Titanic related st related uh, stuff there. And uh, of course, it, it wouldn't be on the anniversary, um, but you know, I think it's 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 great when towns that have connections to maritime events do things like they do for the Titanic in Cove or the uh, or the the Edmund Fitzgerald in, in Whitefish Bay and things like that. I think I think it's important to keep the to keep the memories alive. Scrolling through chat here to see what we've see what we've got going here. White Star says Barton Bella had the nerve to bill the families of the dead staff for lost uniforms of those who died. Well, that would be a callous and shitty thing to do, but it wouldn't be surprising. Little Miss, hey, it's the kiddo's birthday today. She's excited that the Titanic went down on her birthday and that her birthday is tax day. She's a kick. Well, when she gets older and she's allowed to be exposed to uh, to such words, I, I'll be sure to let her know exactly what I think of tax day. Um, I sent Danny on direct several, several messages on Sunday, letting her know what I thought of tax day. Uh, <laughs> Four and a half hours. Four and a half hours to do to do my taxes. 90 minutes. Because I knew that the answer that this document was going to give me was zero. And I had to do a 90-minute math exercise to come up with zero, as I knew it would. I I love I love the IR. They're great. Love taxes. But to do my taxes here in Korea, to file my taxes in Korea, takes less than one minute. Everything is online. All the all the medical expenses, all the you know interest payments, all the loan payments, all the taxes you've paid. Every everything is online. You go click, 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 print, and done. Printing the documents out is the longest part of filing taxes in Korea. So yeah, I'm really bitter every year this time. But little miss, I just want to say this. Hey, girl, you got an awesome dad here, and I I know you like I know you like the show. I know you like being here. So for your birthday, I'm gonna give you a special treat. Happy birthday, little miss! I hope you have an amazing, wonderful day. You're an awfully sweet, beautiful girl, and uh, give your dad a big hug. And dad, give give the little miss a, a big hug for her birthday from me, the gruff old Larax. And one more, just a bonus for you. All right, there you go. Go, go give her a go give her a hug, little miss. She's a sweetie. All right, let's get let's get back on track there. Uh, little, little miss's daughter. She if you go go check go check out his channel. It's little miss's his channel. He does he does some good stuff over there, and he's just got the sweetest, cutest little daughter ever. Uh, did they serve long pork in the restaurant for first class? <laughs> I want to know when the cannibalism starts. They didn't live long enough to worry about cannibalism. But speaking of uh, speaking of interesting facts, 
Speaking of interesting facts, uh, now let's look at the, this little article I dug up called The Most Fascinating Facts About the Titanic. No, seriously, you guys, you guys need to go to Little Miss's channel and, and see what a sweetie she is. You'll just, you'll just fall in love with her instantly. She's just the sweetest. And she's got one hell of a good dad, too. The most fascinating facts about the Titanic. We'll embiggen this here. April 15th marked the 111th anniversary, so this was last year. that they. I'm sure the, the same facts are still fascinating as they were last year. Oh, Paul Amos says, this is the first time for Maritime Monday at two times. Two time is your first time Maritime Monday? Or is your first Maritime Monday at two times normal speed? Uh, those are different equations. If, you, if it's your first time doing a Maritime Monday, welcome aboard. Uh, they're usually much more in-depth than this. But as I said at the beginning, there are way more people that have done way more cool things than I have, that have done way more research. And again, I'm going to put up the link here in chat. If you want to watch the part-time explorer do and get a, an, an absolute amazing panel of experts on the Titanic together to go through a real-time uh, you know, 3D rend you know, rendering of the Titanic from about an hour before the accident until a few hours after the accident. I listened, to, they've done it for 11 years. I listened to it all day today during, while I was at the office. It's good stuff. Uh, they're way, they're tell you way more about the accident and what happened and how it happened and what was going on than I could ever dream of doing in a bajillion years. So I, we're just doing the fringes. We're doing the fringes here. And speaking of fringes, uh, it's time, it's that time. We're just a, we're a little bit over the halfway point, but I want to take a look at the like and subscribe. Well, everybody hit that like and subscribe buttons. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would be incredibly honored if you would do me the privilege and pleasure of subscribing to the channel. It costs you nothing, and it gives me warm fuzzies. And I'm three subscribers away from 75,400. We're 75,397 subscribers. Three more gets me to the 400. 103 more gets me to the 75.5 mark. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, Hit that subscribe button. If you have subscribed, double check to make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the like button. Take our like and subscribe poll. What are we looking at here for our like and subscribe poll today? All uh, right. What should have happened at the end of Titanic? Rose did the right thing by making Jack die and sink into the black abyss. And as Nick Starro said, become a peepsicle. Jack should have climbed on the door and uh, knocked her ass off into the ocean because she intended on murdering him. He should have got his revenge, self-defense, knocked her off, and claimed himself as king of the door. Uh, by the way, 11% of you said that Rose did the right thing. Equal number of people, 11% of you said Jack should have, should have claimed the door as his own. 52% of you said there's room for both. Ah, uh, so I, I, and uh, then 26% of you said both of them should have drowned. I'm kind of in the last category, but I think there should have been a big fight. And, you know, like they're, they're fighting, they're struggling for the door, and then they do something, and then, like, the, the, the door breaks, and then they both sink because they were both greedish, greedy, selfish, murderous people. That's what I think should have happened. <laughs> and if you think that's a dark view, I challenge any of you, next time Danny on direct does a stream, ask her about her version of the Little Mermaid. That shit will give you nightmares. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, of course there was room, Joe, but, you know. Uh, yeah, D Danny on direct has a really, has a really dark vision of what, of what the Little Mermaid should have been. Um, but, yeah, all right. Let's look at this here. The ship was only five days into its maiden voyage to New York from Southampton, England, when it struck an iceberg on a moonless night in the North Atlantic Ocean. The catastrophe has spawned countless books, documentaries, and movies. It goes down here, and then we've got a few facts uh, from the Smithsonian Institute and other, other situations. The Titanic lies 12,600 feet underwater. That's deep. 2.5 miles beneath the surface of the ocean. 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada, the ship broke in two, and, and the gap between the bow and the stern is about 2,000 feet in the seabed. The iceberg that hit the ship may have jutted out 100 feet above the water. Yeah, it was, it was, actually, they thought it was uh, one of the survivors, surviving crew members said that he thought that 
it was a sail from another ship because it it was kind of sail shaped. Uh, turns out it wasn't a sail. It was an iceberg. The iceberg that collided with the Titanic is speculated to have been anywhere from 50 to 100 feet above the water. The entire iceberg is believed to have been between 200 and 400 feet long. Because yeah, you know the uh, there was ice found on the uh, on the deck of the Titanic, so it was at least above the deck. We know that. There's some lifeboats, the Titanic's lifeboats. Over half of the people on board could have survived if all of the space available on the lifeboats was used. That's an interesting point. Um, first of all, there was not enough room for everybody in the lifeboats. There were insufficient number of lifeboats for all the passengers. So slightly more than half, if the number sticks out in my head somewhere around like 60, 70 percent uh, capacity. So only 60 or 70 percent of the people could have gotten the lifeboats. But even the lifeboats weren't fully used. There were some that were lost, some that were damaged, and then just uh, people, that they didn't fill them. And interestingly enough, we've in connection with the uh, Baltimore Bridge, we've heard a lot about the the Titanic law about limitation of ship owners' liability, which we've talked about before a couple of times. Uh, but the other interesting thing, another law that was changed by virtue of the Titanic accident was it became a requirement to, strangely enough, it wasn't before the Titanic, but after the Titanic, it became a requirement to have enough lifeboats for everybody on the ship to get in them. Yeah, at the time of the Titanic, you didn't have to have enough lifeboat seats for everybody on board. That's kind of a shit deal, isn't it? <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, after the Titanic, things changed to where they, oh, you know, it might be a good idea if we require them to have enough lifeboat seating capacity for everybody on board the ship. <laughs> I mean, literally... They knew that if a ship went down, a good chunk of people would die. <clears throat> and this is not an advertisement. This uh, Hershey's milk chocolate thing is not an advertisement for a candy bar. Milton Hershey, the founder of Hershey's chocolate, was supposed to have been on the Titanic. Milton Hershey, the man who invented the famed Hershey's milk chocolate bar, wrote a $300 check to reserve his stateroom on the Titanic, Thankfully, business took precedence, and Hershey and his wife missed out on the excursion. We wouldn't have had Hershey's chocolate if he had got on that ship. Hmm. We all would have been thinner. At least I would have been. Uh, Simon Franklin says, "Hey, Vice Squad, have you have you got every color of the legal vices pullover yet? I don't have I don't have legal vices pullover yet myself. Uh, I've got short sleeve shirts. Act fast; they don't stay in stock for long. Yeah, they stay in stock forever. And fun fact: I don't make anything off of them. I don't make I don't make a dime. I don't make a penny off of the off of the merch. It's just there for people that want it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's up to you if you want to buy it or not. I get zero out of it. I get nothing out of it. It's just there for your entertainment. Jinver with a five pounds. Don't you dare show the bell ringing. I have no desire to cry now. Uh, yeah, I, that that would be rough. Uh, I I I watched the uh, I watched the ringing of the of the Edmund Fitzgerald bell live, and uh, I couldn't make it through it last year. <laughs> I I didn't make it. Alex Kane with the five pounds. Legal vices. If you go to Cove, you need to visit Cronin's Pub in Crosshaven and have a pint of Beamish. Well, that sounds fucking awesome, and that's exactly what I will do. Um, that's what I. That's what I love about traveling is, is I know somebody everywhere I go, and especially now with the YouTube thing, there's got to be a viewer that's pretty much everywhere I want to go, so I can send out the bat signal. Hey, I'm going to this location. What do I absolutely need to do, see, and do? So that's. Thank you very much for that. That uh, I need to timestamp that so I can write it down. Hmm. Thank you very much for the five pounds, Alex Kane, uh, which brings us to what are we at? We're thirty away from Doggo Cam. Yay! Only three of Titanic's four funnels work. That's also a fascinating thing. 
we've got the four funnels here, right? The four smokestacks. Only the back three worked. The front was essentially a fake smokestack. <laughs> the robust ship's four funnels were partially for show. Only three of the funnels ejected soot. The other was merely used for ventilation purposes and undeniably added a certain majestic aesthetic to the ship. So this here is a fake smokestack. <laughs> the front, the, the forward funnel. It, it did nothing other than just uh, ventilate air. You're, you're welcome, Simon. Here's uh, here's some more views of life of the lifeboats. First lifeboat released an hour after the iceberg struck. It may seem like common sense for a ship to immediately release safety lifeboats upon hull breach. The Titanic, however, did not release its first lifeboat until an entire hour had elapsed. They were told it was unsinkable. And again, that's how a lot of these accidents have happened when they've been told that they're unsinkable. That is that is the jinx. That is something you are never, ever supposed to say about your ship. It is unsinkable. Because uh, that usually means that's exactly what's going to happen. But uh, they, they legit didn't think it was that serious of a problem. There's even one of the crewmen who was at the aft of the ship, was at the back of the ship. He stayed there because the accident happened right about at a crew change time. And he stood back there just quietly minding his own business for about 20 minutes waiting for his replacement to come. And then he still kind of puttered around and his, his first realization that there was something going on is when he saw one of the lifeboats deployed. So he, yeah, they were just for whatever reason. A this is this is something that I've always found interesting. They're talking, and we talked about this a bit when we were talking about the, uh, the Titan submersible accident, that there's a specific bacteria that's eating the wreckage of the Titanic. What remains of the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean will eventually be entirely eaten away by a rust-eating bacteria. This microorganism named Holomonas Titanicae by researchers in uh, the this Canadian university and Spain, Spanish university can adhere to steel surfaces and forms the rusticles seen on the, <laughs> the rusticles. It's like the uh, rusty testicles seen on the hull of the wreckage. Look at the rusticles on this thing. Look at the rusticles on this thing, Jane. The ship carried 2,222 passengers and crew. Of the 2,223 people on board the Titanic, 1,517 did not survive the collision with the iceberg. 700 people survived. 1,500 didn't. The ship was not even at full capacity. It could hold more than 3,500 people. Some 100,000 people attended the ship's launch. The first time the immense White Star Liner made its way into the water on May 31st, 1911 in Belfast, it's estimated that 100,000 people, or roughly one-third of the population of Belfast, watched the just over a minute-long launch. The ship was just under 900 feet long, which is just about 100 feet shorter than the gigantic thing that hit the, the uh, Baltimore Bridge there. The Titanic was, yeah, almost exactly. The Titanic measured 900, 882 feet, sorry, 882 feet and nine inches in length, making it the biggest vessel of its time. Today, the largest cruise ship is the Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas, clocking in at nearly 1,200 feet. The ship's baker tread water for two hours before being rescued. Considering the water temperatures, that is phenomenal. One of the bakers aboard the ship, Charles. Joshin supposedly treaded water for two hours before he was found. He claimed the copious amounts of whiskey he had consumed before the ship sank kept his body warm enough to sustain the sub-freezing water. 
that I do not believe for a second because water, I mean, it makes you feel warmer because you know, alcohol makes you feel warmer because it constricts your capillaries and keeps the warm blood close to your core, but it actually lowers your body temperature. So that, that, uh, yeah, that's, oh, if you're freezing to death, drink some booze, that's horseshit. And it will lead to you getting hypothermia and frostbite much quicker than otherwise. Do not do that. The ship burned an estimated 825 tons of coal per day. That's a lot. The ship cost over $7 million to construct, which would be about $183.4 million today. That's an expensive piece of equipment. There two workers died while building the ship. I'm surprised it was only two people. Back in the day, I would expect that a lot more people than that would die during the two years it took to build the ship. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the ship took two, two years to build. 26 months to build the 26,000 ton hull. 20 horses were needed to transport the main anchor. Here, this is a good picture of the main anchor being carried. The ship's main anchor weighed 16 tons, or more than 30,000 pounds. 20 horses were required to transport the anchor two miles from the casting site in the town of Netherton to the train station in Dudley in 1911. The Titanic's last lunch menu sold for tens of thousands of dollars. On September 30th, 2015, a private collector bought the Titanic's last first-class lunch menu at auction for $88,000. He paid $88,000 for a first-class lunch menu. The collector paid $18,000 more than the initial minimum price, initial maximum price. Cloak and Glomer, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Here for the law racks and all the maritime knowledge. Oh, uh, we're just we're just futzing around here today. There's not much knowledge <laughs> coming from my head. It's all it's all just coming from other sources as we play around the edges of the Titanic. Only 23 of the 908 crew were female. Of the 885 male crew members, 693 went down with the ship. But 20 of the 23 females did survive. Less than a third of all people on board the ship survived. Some 61% of the passengers who survived were first-class guests. Less than 25% of third-class passengers survived. Well, there you go. The temperature of the seawater was below freezing when the ship sank. See, that's why I'm calling the, uh, the, the baker's claims into question a little bit. Because uh, you can't tread water sub-freezing temperatures for two hours. You just can't. The, I, I came pretty close to uh, dying of hypothermia once when I was in fairly warm, I mean, much warmer than that water for about 45 minutes. Uh, yeah, it, it was it was rough. According to measurements taken by Captain Stanley, Lord of the SS Californian, a ship that was near the Titanic when it sank, water temperatures were as cold as 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Human body can survive up to 45 minutes in freezing water, according to the Life Jacket Association. 14,000 gallons of drinking water were consumed each day on the ship. The Titanic was able to carry 64 lifeboats, but only carried 20. Yeah, just let that one sink in a little bit. Capable of carrying 64 lifeboats, but only carried 20. Many of the lifeboats that were launched from the Titanic did not pack as many patrons as it could have held. We just talked about that recently. There's a first-class uh, suite. There were 40,000 fresh eggs on board the ship. 3,333 dozen eggs, a majority of which likely went down with the ship. The, USS, the SS Californian was nearby when the Titanic sank, 19 to 21 miles from the stricken ship. Mm, icy waters. The iceberg made a 300-foot gash in the hull of the boat. So like one-third of the ship was opened up like a tin can. Hi, kids. 
two young brothers survived the ship without a guardian. Edmund and Michael Navratil went down in history as the only two ch as the only children to survive the Titanic without a parent. They were two years apart in age and were nicknamed the Titanic Orphans. That'd be a great name for like a super fat tag team wrestling team. Just like get two of the of the biggest fattest wrestlers you can ever imagine. They call them the Titanic Orphans. Uh, their father, Michael Sr., kidnapped them from their mother, whom he was no longer with, and planned to take them to America. The last anyone saw of him was when he put his children in the lifeboat. The Royal Mail Steamer, the Royal Mail Steamer Titanic was the official name. We talked about that. It took over 70 years to find the ship's ruins. We talked about that. First-class patrons got to enjoy a heated swimming pool. That was that was unheard of at the time. Bottled beer. Wow, there was plenty of liquor and cigars aboard. Woohoo! Party on the Titanic. There were twenty thousand bottles of beer. Fifteen hundred bottles of wine were stocked on ship. In addition to plenty of alcohol, plentiful alcohol, there were eight thousand cigars on board. I would take it upon myself to smoke as many of those eight thousand cigars as I possibly could all of which were available to first-class patrons. Well, I would smoke the shit out of 8,000 cigars. How many cigars could I smoke on a <laughs> cross-Atlantic voyage? Musicians, this is this is famous. This is the famous thing where the musicians continued to play on the deck of the ship as the, as the ship went down. They played for more than two hours. It's unclear as to which songs were played as the ship went down, but one can only imagine how somber the atmosphere must have been. In the movie Titanic, one of the songs played was Nearer My God to Thee, which is believed to be the last song played on the ship in real life. Uh, see, that gives me that gives me goosebumps. That's that song, that song has always given me chills. That that particular hymn has always it's always given me goosebumps. Six thousand artifacts have been recovered from the wreck site. John Jacob Astor IV was the wealthiest man on board. We talked about that. The iceberg was first spotted at 11.30 p.m. on April 14th. And uh, you know, they rang the warning bell, but you know, the, the, the ship almost made it, too. It turned hard, hard to port and almost missed it just a, just a few seconds earlier. Just a, it, would have, it would have passed that, and it would have been one of the greatest near misses in history. But unfortunately, it was just too late. An optical illusion may have prevented spotting the iceberg on time. According to historian Tim Malton, atmospheric conditions the night the ship sank could likely have caused super refraction, which could have camouflaged the iceberg. This may explain why the iceberg wasn't spotted until the ship was too near to maneuver out of the way. That or it was just dark on a moonless night. But also, uh, interesting fact, there were no binoculars on board for some reason. They, they, they didn't, the watch didn't have access to binoculars. Only 28 people boarded the first lifeboat. It could carry 65 people. Uh, you know, but only 28 people got in the first one. First class passengers received a music book containing 352 songs. 11 Titanic ships could be built with the Titanic film revenue. I like that. That's, that's, a, that's a good deal. Ooh, Benjamin Guggenheim. Guggenheim faced disaster in style. American business Benjamin Guggenheim and his valet Victor Giglio, well, his his quote unquote valet uh, changed into their best evening wear upon hearing the ship was sinking. Guggenheim reportedly said, "We dressed up in our best and are prepared to go down like gentlemen." His close personal valet went down on them. Went down on them. Um, Sorry, that was supposed to be. Hey, phrasing. But it worked just as well. <laughs> 13 couples were on their Titanic, were on their honeymoon. Well, that's a shitty honeymoon, isn't it? That's a, that's a shitty way to spend your honeymoon. The ship's top speed was 23 knots, which is 26 miles per hour. There were only two bathtubs available for all third-class passengers. Mmm, smelly. But it was only like five days, you know, five, six. I think it was like a five day, supposed to be a five day travel and something like that. There were 706 third class passengers on the Titanic who paid between three and eight pounds to make the crossing. And they only had two baths. New evidence suggests a fire in the ship's hull caused the ship's demise. 
According to the documentary Titanic, the new evidence of fire aboard the ship prior to its departure may have led to the disaster. Investigative journalist uh, Senna Maloney suggests that the metal is probably pronounced Doug. It's, it's spelled Senan. Or it could be Shannon, could be Doug, could, who knows, it's Irish, uh, suggests that the metal had weakened because of an ongoing fire in the ship's hull. The fire burned at temperatures of 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit for three weeks prior to the ship's departure. I have never heard that. Hmm. Uh, the youngest passenger on the Titanic was two months old. And uh, interestingly enough, it doesn't say this here, uh, Milvina Dean was the youngest passenger aboard the, the ship and the longest living survivor. She died at the age of 97 in 2009. She refused to watch uh, Cameron's movie, The Titanic. And for some reason, she, she refused to watch it. 40,000 people met the survivors in New York. Three movies were made about the Titanic. Uh, Titanic was 1953, and Night to Remember was made in 1958, and James Cameron's Titanic was made in 1997. A lifeboat drill that was scheduled the day of the crash was canceled. Oops. For reasons that remain a mystery today, the decision to cancel the drill was made by Captain Edward Smith. Underwater robots took 100,000 plus photos of the wreckage in 2012. The Titanic took two hours and 40 minutes to sink. Six iceberg warnings before collision. They should have been on the lookout. Uh, we got we got Ida Strauss. She refused to get in there without her husband. We read that. Not even a full minute passed between the iceberg sighting and the collision. It was quick, and they so damn near avoided the accident, even though there was so little time to react. Two dogs were rescued from the ship. There were nine dogs aboard the ship, but only two survived, a Pomeranian and a Pekingese. Yeah, see, fat, stupid bulldogs, they'd never make it. Sorry, dogs. Survival of the fittest. Darwin has your number. The last supper served to first-class passengers was an 11-course meal. The menu consisted of hors d'oeuvres like oysters, main courses such as filet mignon, and desserts like chocolate and vanilla eclairs. I eat that shit every day, man. The ship sank very fast. Ship broke in two and the bow sank to the sea bottom at an estimated 35 miles per hour and the stern descended at an estimated 50 miles per hour. Only a few hundred bodies were recovered after the crash and the ship slipped beneath the ocean surface at 2.20 a.m. on April 15, 1912. So there is that. Those are some interesting fun facts. Catherine... I'm watching Jeff. Hey, well, that's good. Catherine was the one I was saying from, uh, from from the Twitter feed that says she lives in Cove. I'll show you around. I would love for you to do that. So that's one of the bucket lists. When I when I hit the Red Breast Distillery, I plan on just popping right down the road, the uh, the 15, 15 miles or however long it is, 16, 17 miles down to Cove to do that. Because, hey, what, what more could you ask for from an Irish day than going to the Red Breast and Jameson Distillery and then going to see the Titanic? Uh, experience. That's what I want to do. So yes, thank you so much for that offer. That is very, very generous of you. And then Alan Walsh is going to get me drunk in Scotland, along with uh, Joe and others that live over there. So, so I've, I've got my drinking planned out. Well, I'm going to bring my son and we're going to, we're going to experience the joys of Ireland and Scotland. The adult way. All right. Well, um, there's an, there, there, there's, other people here, we had, uh, we, we've had a couple of people here in chat say that it's their birthday or, or their daughter's birthday. Uh, but there's other people that have, that have birthdays today. Uh, Welsh people in particular, I don't know, really quick here. Do we have anyone from Wales? Do we have anybody from Wales here watching tonight? Anybody from or extremely near to Wales? Just, just give me a, just give me a shout or a hands up or a number one in chat of your, if you happen to be from or in or very, very near to Wales at the moment. I'm just curious. Uh, it takes there's about a 20 second delay between you know you between me asking stuff, you getting it, and uh, responding. It takes about 20 seconds. Apparently, apparently nobody. Uh, Welsh lady reads is from Wales. Is well, <laughs> is Welsh lady reads here? Oh. 
Simon Franklin, of course, of course you're from Wales and it's your birthday. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> that's, that's pretty damn convenient. Thank you. Then I'm just talking to you. Uh, all right, well, nearer than you. <laughs> yes, you are half Welsh. I'm not near the ocean, Lamal. Um, anyway, the reason I bring this up is uh, because it's a uh, it's one of Ryan Reynolds' business partners' birthday. Who's from Wales, from Wrexham to be to be specific, and uh, they both own a Wrexham football team together. And uh, this is also this is obscure Titanic related stuff, as you can as you can get, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is Titanic related. This is a birthday wish from Ryan Reynolds. As some of you may know, today is April 14th, the birthday of my beloved co-chairman, Mr. Rob McElhenney. It also happens to be the day. Let's get some better. The Titanic went down. So for his big day this year, I financed an expedition to the ocean floor to retrieve a few bottles of Wrexham lager which was actually on that maiden voyage to use in an epic birthday toast. We searched and searched, and while well, unfortunately we didn't find any drinkable Wrexham lager, what we did find was even more beautiful. So join me in celebrating the heart of our Wrexham AFC family by sending Rob all the birthday love we can. But please don't embarrass him by going to vistaprint.com slash Rexon to purchase, gift, and share items customized in all of Rob's splendor and soft, delicate chest hair. And don't put it all over social media. Nor should you visit the Teapot Gallery in Rexon, where this picture will actually hang among genuine works of art. No, just do as I am and simply wish Rob a happy birthday. We'll see you in League One. <laughs> so there's a there's a birthday wish from Ryan Reynolds to to his business partner who they they co-own the Rexham team I believe and uh yeah that was just a, a thing Oh yes, it's very real. Yeah, it's absolutely real. They they call on the team, and he you know, just happened to have his birthday on the Titanic day. So there we go. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. All right. <clears throat> for all, for all you for all you uh, you footballers there in in the UK, that was that was for you. Now, uh, how are we doing on time? Oh God, we're actually we we actually I thought we'd finish early, and we actually have we're going to run a little bit extra today. It feels like being Ryan, Ryan Reynolds' friend would be as difficult as being friends with Tom Green. No, because I would I would laugh and I would love to have Ryan Reynolds for a friend. Uh, I just kind of want to punch and choke and uh, make make unconscious Tom Green every time I see or think about him. Ryan Reynolds is like way cooler uh, in my book. <laughs> so anywho, right <clears throat> here we go. Uh, remember, remember the 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 Titan submersible disaster. This is just a very short little little interlude. If you remember, um, they said they were there were reports that they had heard banging underwater that the that that the uh, underwater sonar had picked up some banging noises. Well, as of a couple of weeks ago, they released the recording for the Titan of these mysterious banging noises that were heard. They said they uh, they said that they don't be believe they now they don't believe they were from the vessel from the from the submersible. Uh, they they believe they may have been uh, natural oceanic noises or noises from another ship. But uh, this, let me bring this up here. <clears throat> It's kind of weird. I don't know what it means, but it's kind of weird. Mm 
Excuse me while I talk to my dogs for a second. <laughs> They were they were behaving inappropriately. Um, all right. Titan sub bangs that led to hope of cruise survival. Heard for the first time. Audio of the noises detected during the search for the Titan submersible that prompted hope of the cruise survival has been released as part of a new documentary. The bangs were recorded by sonar buoys in a massive rescue operation for the missing submersible and its five passengers. It was lost on a deep sea voyage to the Titanic wreck in June 2023 and later found to have imploded, killing all on board. U.S. Navy analysis determined that the banging noises were most likely either ocean noise or noise from another search ship. Now, you, when you listen to this, you tell me, does this sound anything remotely like naturally occurring ocean noise? Yes, noises from another ship I can get behind. I doesn't I don't know why they, another searching ship would be making this particular noise, but uh, it certainly doesn't sound at all natural to me. An official told BBC's US partner CBS, the Royal Canadian Air Force team that led the search and rescue mission gave the audio to producers of the Titan sub disaster minute by minute, which minute by minute, which is due to air on Channel 5 on 6 and 7 March. Uh, right. So this is the, uh, this is a recording of the noises that were heard by the buoy. And let, let me, let me know what you think. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not voting for anything natural in that sound. There is nothing naturally occurring with timed knocks like that. I can't think of a single thing in nature that would reproduce that sound. Uh, I mean, it could be something from another ship. Another of the searching vessels. I don't know why it would make a pattern like that, but it does. It's just a strange, weird noise. And it was just released a couple of weeks ago. Pistol shrimp. <laughs> I don't think it's. I don't think it's pistol shrimp. All right, now a little bit. So now we're, we've we've gone from the real Titanic and we're drifting. Uh, we're drifting, so to speak, towards movie Titanic. Our last couple of stories deal with movie Titanic today, and uh, in the meantime, we got some super chats to get through here. Island with a five dollar says, "I appreciate an attorney who can explain, who can also explain exactly why slash how drinking whiskey when your ship is sinking will hasten hypothermia." <laughs> hey, you got you got to have some you got to have some basic survival knowledge. You know, <laughs> can't just be a one trick pony. You got to you got to have you got to have skills and know how. I'm I'm actually kicking strawberry here with my foot. Stop that. Come here, buddy. Come here, baby. What are you doing? You guys dumb dead. We're going to go play in just a minute. And Cloak and Glomer with the $5. Maritime Monday is much better than tax day. Yeah. Uh, I would rather be on the Titanic and go down with the ship than, than go through tax. I, I, I hate tax day. Makes me say bad words. And speaking of cool things and bad words, we are now $20 away from Doggo Cam, but we're running out of time. We're running out of time. We are $20 away. You know what to do, troll extraordinaire. Come on. <laughs> Help us out. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's go to some weird Titanic movie news, shall we? This is a weird Titanic movie news story that, uh, that, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll inspire Simon Franklin. To, 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 to help us grift here. Uh, let me bring up the, come on, Simon, work for your money. <laughs> work for my money, Simon. <laughs> Get me super chat, Simon. <laughs> Do your non-job. All right. The famous floating door that caused endless heated debates 
sold for seven hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars at action at auction. Listen to that shit. This prop from the movie, which served as the basis of our poll today, sold for almost three quarters of a million dollars. And my voice has gone up and it's scratchy and I have to cough. Isn't that some intercourse there? In James Cameron's hit romantic disaster film, <laughs> I just, I like those four words put together. Hit romantic disaster film. That could that could be my marriage. A hit romantic disaster film. Rose DeWitt, Bukake, Bukater, Kate Winslet, and uh, Jack Dawson, Leonardo DiCaprio, locate a wooden slab to float on after the ship is sunk. The young couple struggle to both clamber on, so Jack protects Rose by allowing her to climb on board while he remains suspended in the icy ocean, where he dies, likely of hypothermia. The balsa wood panel is made from fucking balsa wood? It's not even real hardwood? That's some shit there. Pay three quarters of a million dollars for a slab of balsa wood? Arguably the film's third most significant character has for decades caused fans to question whether it would have been big enough to support both fictional characters. That's one of our choices on our poll today. In the aftermath of the Titanic sinking, but now one superfan bidder can put all the endless story theories to rest and reach their own conclusion. In his auction listing notes, it revealed that the flotation prop is often mistakenly referred to as a door, but it is in fact part of the door frame above the ship's first class lounge entrance. It is designed with motifs associated with Rococo architecture. Well, fuck you then. Get some of that Rococo architecture balsa wood shit for three quarters of a million dollars. Based on the most famous complete piece of debris salvaged from the 1912 tragedy, this intricately carved prop bears a striking resemblance to the Louis the Fifteenth, eh, Louis the Sixteenth style panel housed in the Maritime Museum in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The listing noted. <laughs> MG Law says, "Well, while they could both fit on it, it wouldn't displace enough water to float." Yes, well. They would still be better than being completely submerged under the water. They would only be partially submerged. The item was sold among a number of other props and costumes by restaurant and resort chain Planet Hollywood. Other Titanic relics included the ship's helm wheel. Now I'd pay some good money for that. And chiffon dress Winslet wore for the scenes where the ship sinks. It also... Sorry, that was that one weird. Uh <laughs> It also includes the iconic axe Jack Nicholson used in The Shining. Now, I'd pay three quarters of a million dollars for Jack Nicholson's axe from The Shining before I paid it for some stupid balsa wood door that Kate Winslet and DiCaprio wriggled around on. Harrison Ford's signature bullwhip from the Temple of Doom. Eh, I don't know about the Temple of Doom whip, but if it was the original Raiders of the Lost Ark bullwhip, I'd pay, for, I'd, pay out the, I'd pay out the ass for that. That would be awesome. Not so sure about the Temple of Doom whip, though. The lucrative sale is no surprise for one of the highest grossing films of all time, but also reignited fans to reference the raft's ability to allow two people to float. If she'd shuffled over to let Jack on, it might have fetched a million, joked one fan on social media. An additional ex-user shared an image of the couple with the raft and quipped, Jack, yes, Rose, don't touch my door. It's worth 700, meh, lame joke. Another ex-user asked the old age question, could the new owner try to see if it's big enough for two? In 2020-22, Cameron set out to settle the matter by commissioning a scientific study to put the whole thing to rest to prove Jack's fate was not avoidable. We have since done a thorough forensic analysis of the hypothermia expert who reproduced the raft from the movie, Cameron told Post Media. We took two stunt people who were, were the same body mass of Kate and Leo and we put sensors all over them and inside, inside them. The fuck? Fuck. We, we took two stunt people and put sensors inside them. <laughs> and we put them in ice water and we tested to see whether they could have survived through a variety of methods. And the answer was there's no way they both could have survived. Only one could survive. I, 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 uh, we put sensors all over them and inside them. What is this? What is going on? Inside, insisting on Jack's death, Cameron said, it's like Romeo and Juliet. It's a movie about love and sacrifice and mortality. The love is measured by the sacrifice. 
The results of the study aired on National Geographic in 2023 after the film celebrated its 25th anniversary as a beloved classic. It included it concluded that no position would have changed the outcome of the film's final scenes, no matter what fans are. Yeah, but you could have at least fucking tried, Rose. You could have at least tried and been like Ida, what's her nuts? And got, you know, Ida, whoever the hell her husband was, which whichever famous rich person Ida's husband was, just totally slipped. It could have been like, be like Ida. At least give Jack a chance. No, you didn't even want to give him a chance. Be, be the, that could have been your last act of love was to go, just to like die together with your third class Jack. She didn't even try. She's like, oh, oh, fuck off, peasant. Oh, oh, th oh thank you for giving the raft to me. I'm going to be a bitter old woman and I'm going to have a stupid jewel and I'm going to throw it off in the ocean. She, she didn't even give him a shot. Didn't even try. All right. Uh, enough of that. <laughs> enough about that. We have a couple of starred things here, do we? Uh, no, we don't. Sorry. <laughs> I'm on tilt. <laughs> she didn't want to get her hair wet. Oh, zing. It's it's like sixth sense. I see dead people. Oh, that's a good one. We like that one. Boom. Oh, John Montgomery or Jean Montgomery. We'll assume you're not French. How about that? Jean Montgomery, please release the hounds. Well, you just did it. You you just you just did that very, very act yourself. I didn't do it. You did it. So give me a quick second here. We've only got one hound at the moment. Um, let me see. And Strawberry is lurking directly under the camera. So see if we can get the angle here. All right. Oh, we got to zoom out a bit. That is just too up close and personal. You can see her ear. Uh, the way the camera is set up here. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's some, there's some doggage. And doop, 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 doop. where are we? Where are we? There we are. Okay, due to Gene Montgomery and everyone else's super duper awesome support, including Simon Franklin's efforts to drum up support and super chats, we have released the emotional support potato pig dog. Uh, doggo cam release the hounds for the last few minutes. We will have Strawberry as my guest. What's up, doggo? Sorry, you heard your name, didn't you? She's learning. See, I, I never called her Strawberry until we started doing the stream because I always talk to her, I always speak to her in Korean. Dar Strawberry is doggy in Korean. Oh, yeah, that word. Yeah, that's your name, huh? So I, I've always called her doggy. But ever since I've been calling her Strawberry for you guys, and now she's starting to respond to that as well. Uh, so there we go. What's up, Doggo? That is, that is Strawberry for those of you that uh, are not familiar with the Doggo cam. Thank you very, very much, Gene Montgomery, for pushing us over the edge. That resets us to, to another, if we get another $100 in the next five minutes, I'll do a shot of horrific Korean whiskey, but I'm not expecting that. Oh, and by the way, uh, we'll talk about that later. All right, let's get through the important stuff. Then we'll do the not so important stuff. That's the end of that story. Now, that that is a weird story. That's that's a weird story about the the auctioning of the stupid prop door for nearly three quarters of a million dollars. But our last story about the movie is slightly weirder than that. This is an even weirder story. Something that I didn't know about until yesterday when I was doing some uh, some show prep and looking for interesting or funny or weird things about the, the movie. Uh, Ronan asks, what is Yoda in Korean? Yoda. <laughs> so it's, it's the same. No one, all these years later, no one knows who got the Titanic cast and crew high on PCP. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this was a thing until yesterday. Apparently, somebody got the crew and cast high on PCP during the filming of the movie. <laughs> exactly, people in chat. Yes, Angel Dust Brad. 
The notorious spiked seafood chowder on the set of Titanic remains top tier behind the scenes lore. Uh, there was some, there was some, uh, apparently some question as to whether it was a real thing or not, but apparently it is. Uh, <laughs> apparently it's a real thing. All right, let's uh let's 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 learn you a little bit more about this, shall we? And we gotta close that window and bring this one up here. Right. Twenty-five years ago, a late night shoot of James Cameron's Titanic. How's that? Is that too big? Yeah, that's that's perfect. A late night shoot of James Cameron's Titanic suddenly descended into chaos after the cast and crew took a break to chow down servings of seafood chowder. While food poisoning is never out of the question when it comes to eating seafood, the cast and crew were not suffering from tummy aches, but rather the hallucinogenic effects of PCP, which was used to spike the chowder. <laughs> we had a room for the grips and electricians, and one of the guys started talking really hyper. Crew member said Jake Clark recalls per vulture. He's a big guy, like 6'4", and he says, do you guys feel okay? Because I don't. I feel like I'm on something, and believe me, I would know. <laughs> he was just chattering on like that. And just as he was saying this, we saw James Cameron run by the door and this extra running behind him. He said, there's something in me. Get it out. Cast and crew members were swiftly divided up into good crew and bad crew areas, with the somber employees tasked with wrangling those reeling from the drug. Amongst the bad bunch included Cameron himself, as well as actor Bill Paxton, who were all carted away to the nearest hospital. Bill Paxton was a real sweetie, says Claude Russell, uh, a, a set decorator on the film. He was sitting next to me in the hallway of the hospital, and he was kind of enjoying the buzz. Meanwhile, grips were going down the hallway doing wheelies in wheelchairs. Between 50 and 80 people then marched into Dartmouth General Hospital high on PCP. The sense of giddiness and confusion soon turned into torment and unbridled ecstasy, making it a long night for both the hospital staff and the crew. People are moaning and crying, wailing, collapsed on tables and gurneys. Cameron told Vanity Fair about the incident in 2009. The DP... Uh, <laughs> this is the director of photography, not what you're thinking. Caleb Deschanel is leading a number of crew down the hall in a highly vocal conga line. You can't make this stuff up. The spike chowder spurred a years-long investigation, resulting in nothing. In 1999, the case was officially closed with no leads on who could possibly, who could have possibly drugged the Titanic set or what motivated them to do so. However, for those there that night, the PCP chowder became a behind-the-scenes story for the ages. One of the art department guys made t-shirts and he recreated that chowder on the corner of the t-shirt, Clark says. He gave that out to a bunch of the local crew. It said underneath it, good crew, bad crew. Well, um, that's what you would like to think. You would like to think that uh, this story had been put aside. You'd like to think that it was that it was dead and gone. It was, hey, Yoda's back. It hey no Yoda we're not we're not going there we're not going there Yoda don't do it don't do it don't do it don't do it all right uh, it was it was late dressed in 1990 it was over and done with until a couple of weeks ago a, a couple of weeks ago uh, sorry we got to we got to readjust the the this is the Yoda didn't do nothing cam here what's up Yoda. Let's see if we can, uh, we got to, there we go. That's Yoda. Yoda came for a visit. Um, as I said, this was, this was dead in 1999 until a couple of weeks ago when it was resurrected. Canadian police ordered to release more information about the infamous Titanic PCP chowder incident. This was Saturday. This was issued on Saturday of this week. We might finally get more information about that time James Cameron, Bill Paxton, and 50 other Titanic crew members got dosed on PCP. Oops. I got to... He's laid down. There we go. Uh, 
we can't get them both. We'll just we'll just focus on Yoda there for a minute. Unless we can get unless we can get strawberries, dumb face. There we go. We'll do strawberry for a bit, then we'll do Yoda for a bit. As far as legendary pop culture stories go, fewer weirder than the Titanic PCP chowder incident. A real, actual event that happened during filming of the block of the future blockbuster in, of, in August of 1996, in which at least 50 cast and crew members, including star Bill Paxton and director James Cameron, were dosed with angel dust. Someone slipped into the soup they were all sharing. A story told on more than one occasion by the late Paxton in his days making the talk show rounds, it has all the stuff of an urban legend, including Cameron supposedly making himself throw up to get the drug out of his system, and Paxton riding out the high by going back to his trailer and drinking a case of beer, except with a ton of evidence and police reports to back it up. And now even more information about the incident is due to come to light. It seems as Nova Scotia's Information and Privacy Commissioner has ordered Halifax police to unredact at least some of their reports on the investigation, which was closed without naming a culprit in 1999. The commissioner apparently found that censors had been too overzealous in their efforts to hide information in the publicly available record, including third-party accounts of the events that occurred that wild Canadian night. You can read the order yourself, though it's fairly dense with legalese, we'll warn, but the upshot is that some intrepid knowledge seekers filed an information request, was unhappy with how much black ink was on the, was on the info they got back, and has now successfully petitioned for more information. According to CTV News, the, <laughs> the info could be publicly available as soon as May, potentially kicking off what we imagine could be one of the funniest, weirdest true crime investigations of all time. And you know we're going to cover it right here on Mirror Time Monday. It's always nice to have a mass poisoning incident that everyone is alive to laugh about afterwards, you know? Anyway, please enjoy maybe the coolest thing James Cameron has ever said in an interview where he described the incident from 2009. People are moaning and crying, wailing, collapsed on tables and gurneys. The DB Caleb Deschanel is leading a member of the crew up down the highly, highly vocal conga line. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, and it's, we, we don't have time to get into it tonight. Uh, that was our, it was our uh, reserve in case we really, really ran out of stuff to talk about. It was the actual order that we we just heard a summary of. This this is actually it. It it, it is a thing that exists. This is the official information and privacy commission for Nova, Nova Scotia report on the, of this incident here. An applicant asked Halifax Regional Police for records related to a 1996 incident where dozens of crew members on the set of the movie Titanic ate food that was allegedly laced with a drug called <laughs> angel dust. <laughs> HRP withheld portions of the requested information under uh, Section 4721B, Intergovernmental Affairs, Section and all this other crap, all these other statutes. The commissioner finds that HRP was not authorized to withhold information under these sections. She finds that with personal identifiers withheld, factual observations of third parties do not constitute their personal information and so cannot be withheld. She also recommends that HRP continue to withhold the personal information of third parties. If this gets out, if we get copies of this, you are damn straight sure that I am going to be following that story. That would make a great Maritime Monday to read accounts of the people on the set of the film Titanic that were sucking down chowder laced with PCP. Uh, and, all right, what have we done here? And that, ladies and germs, Brings us to the conclusion of yet another Maritime Monday. But if you want to stick around, we're going to have a little conversation here for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes before we wrap it up. Because we got a few things to do. we got a few things to talk about, a few things to lead and, uh, and hype for the upcoming, upcoming week. Some of, some of which uh, Simon Franklin will enjoy and some of which uh, you might enjoy as well. But first, let's look at our poll here. Uh, we got 448 concurrent members, 471 likes. Smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button. Let's see if we let's see if we got our three subscribers. Did we get our three subscribers? Yes, we did. We are now at we got four subscribers. 75,401. We we are now 99 away from 70,000. 75,500. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you have to hit the subscribe button. Double check to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is asshole and sometimes likes to unsubscribe you. Then take our like and subscribe poll. What should have happened at the end of the Titanic movie? 
11% of you, oh, this is exactly the way it was before. 11% of you said Rose did the right thing. 11% of you said Jack should have claimed the door for himself. 52% of you said there's room for both. Hi, dog. 52% of you said there's room for both. And 26% of you said they both should have drowned. And that's, that's the end of the poll. Just our silly little like and subscribe poll to remember you to have you like and subscribe. Now we'll we'll turn the attention over here to, to Yoda, who is asleep on the floor. All right, there's, just, there's a few more things we got to wrap this up. Um, one thing that I really have to do is today is the sentencing for Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the uh, Alec Baldwin armorer for, for the shooting of, of uh, Helena Hutchins on the set of the movie Rust. It is her sentencing, and I'm, I'm trying to find out when that is. I'm looking at Law and Crime right now to see when they're going to be showing that, if they're going to be showing that live. Uh, upcoming at 1.30 a.m. All right, it's coming up an hour from now. Uh, I'm going to stay up and watch that. So uh, be looking for a notification. Come here and watch watch the sentencing of Hannah Gutierrez with Reed with me in one hour and 15 minutes from now. We'll watch that. Now, also, um, the one of the trials that I was desperately looking forward to covering, I am not going to be able to cover live or anything close to completely. And that is the, that is the Karen Reed trial. Karen Reed was on, on trial for the alleged uh, killing of her police officer boyfriend, which I personally believe she was framed and set up. There is, I know I, I'm supposed to go into these trials thinking, oh, you know, innocent until proven guilty. I am firmly convinced of her evidence. I mean, of her, of her innocence. And I think the, the authorities have a ridiculous amount to explain how this could not, how this was not a, a frame up job, just a bald face frame up job of Karen Reed. Uh, I cannot cover this trial live. It's supposed jury selection is supposed to start today. And I, I believe opening arguments are supposed to start in a couple of days. But the reason I can't do this is they're scheduling it for a six-week hearing. The uh, The prosecution is expected to take a month or a little over a month and a week or two weeks for the defense. And that puts me right in the middle of my vacation. So I'll, I'll be on vacation from March 25th to June 8th. And you know, the verdict is supposed to come down during my vacation. So there's absolutely no way I can cover six weeks of trial, not talk about anything else, only focus on a trial for six weeks just to not be around for the verdict. So what I plan on doing is as often as possible, as, as my schedule and subject matter availability allows, to do some uh, summaries of the trial. So that those of you that are wondering if I was going to, I've been wanting to do the Karen Reed trial desperately from the very beginning. Um, that was the first time we had Lauren De Laguna on the stream was when she was explaining the uh, Karen Reed trial to me over a year ago, I believe. Um, but I cannot cover the trial live. I'll do my best to do updates as often as I can on what's going on and, and highlight some particularly interesting testimony and whatnot. Um, so that won't be happening. And that raises the vacation schedule. Again, if, if, if you're in the Western United States and you happen to be close, I will be in Las Vegas from May 25th until May 27th. I'm leaving early morning on May 28th. Uh, also, there will be uh, Flux is going to be there. Uh, Ari Jacob lives there, so Ari Jacob will be there. We're going to hook up with Ari, and uh, she's, she's going to take us to where I probably would have met OJ if he had lived another six weeks. Uh, we'll pay homage to the OJ chair uh, rather than meet him myself. Um, but we'll hang out with Ari a bit. And uh, uh, Waifu Kron, also now, now known as Moxie Dame Jess, will be there. She's gonna She lives sort of next door in Cali. She's going to come on over and spend some time with us for a few days. And uh, Ozzy Overlord's looking at getting some tickets. We don't know if he's going to make it or not, but Ozzy's looking on being there. And uh, there's other people that talk with Sally. She, Sally, she's mentioned that she might, she might go over other people. 
uh, are saying that they might drive up and around. So if you happen to be in the Las Vegas area from May 25th to 28th, give a shout out and uh, we'll let you know. We'll let you know where we are and you can we, 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 you know, we can just kind of hang out. We're going to spend a lot of time in bars, cigar lounges and uh, probably you know strip clubs because it's Vegas. <laughs> We're just going to have fun and hang out. So if you happen to be there, we'll, I'll put out the schedule and let people know where we are and what we're doing as things happen. But if you're going to be there, let me know. Send me a DM on Twitter at uh, The Legal Vices. Not Legal Vices, because weirdly, Legal Vices is actually a BBW and uh, the the supersized BBW porn site in Vegas. So make sure it's The Legal Vices, not Legal Vices. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll keep you posted as what's going on. And then I'll be in Utah from 28th of May until the 7th of June. Like we did last year, we'll do a couple of meetups. We'll do one in Salt Lake, one in Brigham City. Um, and we'll you know, Danny, Danny on direct should be back by that time. So hopefully Danny will be able to uh, join us for one of the meetups in Salt Lake. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, I'll keep you posted on the dates, but uh, it'll be sometime I said in Vegas from the 25th to the 27th of May and then 28th to the 7th of June in uh, in Utah. Um, let's see. So coming up for as far as the show is concerned, tomorrow we're going to do part three of the of the what the Hales Ohio adventures where the judge is going to be making her decisions on whether or not to give them the permanent injunction, the permanent uh, restraining order, which. Obviously, they did, but it'll be amusing to watch the the uh, the final ver- the final part of the Ohio adventures of the Hales. Uh, Wednesday, not sure. Wednesday is likely going to be a uh, a tonsil twins Clayton Eckert read of some some of the some of the evidentiary documents because uh, on uh, on Friday evening stream we read through the orders and some motions. And now I want to go back and read some of the supporting documents because they're hilarious. The, 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 uh, the new judge for Laura Owens that we're calling douche canoe. Uh, he's, he's made some funny submissions as well as Clayton Eckerd's. So that, that's what's coming up probably on Wednesday. Thursday is our retro trial of Donald Hartung and Friday, Friday is the April F it Friday stream. For those of you who don't know what the F it Friday stream is, that's the day when I just say, fuck it. We call it fuck it Friday. We just say, fuck it. And we have a great time. We get a big panel of guests on. We we go as long as my liver holds out. The whole thing is just it's a it's an unabashed griftathon, which uh, which I believe Simon Franklin can get way be, can get well behind. The entire purpose of that stream is to get all the grifting out of the way, so we don't really have to do it for the rest of the month. Every hundred dollars that comes in, I do a shot of premium whiskey because uh, what whatever we make in the super chats in and super chats and membership and all those things in the previous month's effort Friday, I take 25% of that and buy a bottle of whiskey with it. And we drink that during the stream. So if it's uh, you know, if, it, if we get f- only $400, I buy a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey. If we get $4,000 in super chats, then I have to take shots of a thousand dollar bottle of whiskey. It's uh, it's fun. It encourages you to uh, break my soul by watching a whiskey aficionado and lover take shots of ridiculously expensive whiskey, but it also, you know, it gets the, it gets the grift out of the way so we can just have fun. So join us for an effort Friday. The uh, follow me on Twitter. The guest list will be, will start to take shape in the, in the next few hours. We'll be letting you know who the guests are. They're going to be on the stream. And uh, make sure you you empty all your all your pockets and coffers and uh, throw them at my feet on Friday. It'll be most likely Friday evening U.S. time, and uh, we'll we'll just grift until you run out of money or I run out of liver. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It's fun, people. It's all in good. It's all in good humor. It's just a boozy griftathon. Uh, and then next week will be another Maritime Monday. And for those of you that watched last Maritime Monday with uh, with my friend Josh Chisholm, commander, retired, who was on the SS San Francisco nuclear submarine when it hit an underwater mountain. We talked about that for a couple of hours last week. He's given me a lot more documentation on that. So I, we might go back and, and do a retrospective on that and read some of the documentation. We might talk about the Baltimore Bridge thing. I'm just about Baltimore bridged out. The, the whole Baltimore Bridge thing, they're clearing away the wreckage and they're opening up channels. That's really it. There's nothing is going to happen on that for a long time. So I'm not I'm not really feeling 
let's do let's do an awesome update on the Baltimore Bridge, but we'll see how it goes. I've, I've got a week to work it out. Uh, all right, that's it. That's kind of all we got. Um, what can we do for the next hour? Uh, what, what can we do for the next hour? Who can? Where can we send you for an hour? I don't know. We'll just let you run amok for an hour. How's that? Just, just run amok and do whatever you want. And join me here one hour from now for the Hannah Gutierrez Reed sentencing. You do not want to miss her. She's famous for naming her phone the Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. Uh, that was announced in court during her her trial. So, amok, amok, amok. Witches. You're all witches. All of you are witches. Clearing away the wreckage sounds like Evan Friday. Exactly. Can you start a new stream and dump us into it? You just want to, like, hang out for an hour and watch nothing? Uh, I'm going to do other stuff for an hour. Um, I guess. Hmm. It's gonna. It would take you. Uh, do you guys want to hang around? And there's like 400 people. Do you want to hang around and just have me funnel you into my stream? That's not going to start for an hour. All right, I, I can do that if you want. It's going to take me a little bit of time here because uh, I have to come up with a thumbnail. Um, keep keep talking to me, peeps. I'll. Uh, I'll try to do this thumbnail on the fly here. I don't know where I keep my thumbnail. Where, where's my thumbnail maker? Oh, Hannah Gutierrez, read. Hannah Gutierrez, read. Where are you? Hmm. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if you want me to do this or not. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll toss this out to you guys. If you want me just to shut this down, and you'll find your way back in an hour. Uh, put a put a one in chat. If you just want me to sit here and do this and set it up and dump you into it, then uh, give, give it two in chat, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what you can do. And then we'll, we'll see what you think. Doggos are snoring. That's always good. All right. Ooh, verdict. Okay. Sentencing. All right. I'm, while you're doing that, I am frantically making a thumbnail. Two, 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 two. All right. Well, those of you that want to go somewhere else and find your way back here in an hour, please feel free to do so. And on your way out, just accept my thanks for your generosity, your uh, the super chats, the gifted memberships, the monthly memberships you've bought, and for uh, you know, keeping each other company in chat and for being awesome. We'll see you in an hour, folks, if you want to come back then. Otherwise, hang around for a few minutes, and I'll put this uh, stream together. And uh, send you all into it, I guess. All right, I am I am pulling up the. Uh, I've just made the thumbnail. It was that quick, uh, and I've got to download. No, I don't want to download all the thumbnails I've ever made. Uh, we want to do the current page. Done. Download. Hey, this is this is what you get. You wanted this. You get to watch me set up. A, well, not you get to listen to me set up a thumbnail while you watch the dogs. Uh, downloading, we need to go to the Alec Baldwin, Hannah Gutierrez trial, Baldwin, 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 sentencing, we'll call this sentencing. All right, I have saved the thumbnail, now I need to go into StreamYard and set up a live stream. Uh, what are we going to call this? I, I don't know. I don't know what we've been calling the uh, this process. So now I need to go back into YouTube. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not paying attention to any of you now because I'm doing this. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Let the doggos host. <laughs> There's a lot more to this than that. Well, you, well, you have to make the thumbnail. All righty. So let's see. And I want to keep the the verbiage the same as my previous. Hannah Gutierrez stuff. So let's we're going we're going back in the files. Uh huh. Next, Hannah. There you are, Hannah, babe. New Mexico v. Hannah Gutierrez. I didn't call her Reed because that's not really her name. It's not her legal name. All right, title: Hannah Gutierrez. Verdict: No, this is sentencing. Sentencing. Description. 
The end is here. Same description. What are we gonna say? The the end is here. Join me. Join me for the sentencing sentencing of Hannah. She is sentenced to dot 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 exclamation mark. Got my links. USA, USA, USA. All right. And then we want to schedule for later. We want to schedule it for 1.30 a.m. my time. Today, 1.30 a.m. It is now 12.30 a.m. exactly. And then we got to go back here into the thumbnail, select the thumbnail. Thank you all for listening to this weird explanation of what I'm doing. <laughs> That's just what we do. Sentencing. Apply. And create live stream. Live stream is created. Is created. Now it's created. 12.30 a.m. Scheduled 1.30 a.m. Hannah Gutierrez reads sentencing. Great. Now I have to set this to uh, raid into myself. So we close that window. <laughs> Almost there, kids. Almost, <laughs> Almost there, folks. Content live, Maritime Monday, Titanic sinking, go to customization, redirect, look at me, there I am, redirect to myself, and save. I have now redirected to myself. So if you want to go there and just hang out and uh, stare at the wall for an hour, please do. I hope to see you there. It should be a fairly short hearing. I don't know if they're going to do victim impact. If they do victim impact statements, it could be a little bit longer. But if they just go in and go, this is what your sentence is, it could be out in 15 minutes. We'll see. Yes, Flux, Jeff is coming back. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Jeff's coming back. He's coming, totally. Uh, right, so we will be there. Uh, <laughs> and that's it. All right, folks, thank you for joining for the Maritime Monday for the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic on Monday, April 15th, 112 years ago. Thank you uh, for mods for doing your moddy best. Thank you for to Simon Franklin, uh, neutral, chaotic neutral troll who may troll his way into being a mod if he's not careful. <laughs> and Thank you so much to chat for your support and super chats, the monthly, monthly member, the monthly memberships, the monthly uh, chat, uh, the monthly membership subscriptions, keeping each other entertained, keeping the uh, show interesting and on the way. Thank you to Strawberry and Yoda who are here. I got to go play with them for an hour is basically what I'm going to do. They missed me today. All right, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you in an hour or we will see you tomorrow, whatever you choose. But I hope we'll see you in an hour just for the just for the quick sentencing of Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Until we meet again, ladies, gentlemen, and dogs. Legal Vice is me saying out. Peace. Thank you very much. Go check out Legal Vices. See what he's doing an hour from now. Bye.